I've been talking that whole time you did. On uh, Twitch. <laughs> okay, there yeah, we go. I had to make this a little bit bigger too. There you go. Yeah, okay, there we go. Um, so, so yeah, blank screen. All right, so you can go up to the top and then you can hit 2D. Yep. And then we'll click a, for root node on the top left, click 2D scene. Okay. And then, I don't know, we can double click that give it a new name or something. I'll just call it world. It's kind of like my default start. Yeah. And then control S save. And yeah. So that would be like the overall, like that's like the scene name, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is the name of the scene. You can see it down here in the file. We have yeah. that scene we just made. And so we're going to, I guess we'll make start with just making like a basic we're just gonna use placeholder graphics and then we can go online and find some free assets to use so right. um you can hit this plus sign or you can hit control a when you have this root scene selected okay and then that will let you add a node so you can search for whatever one you have it selected or whatever node you have selected i'll add it as a child to that so if you just search for static body and then yeah, and then just double click that. Do you do you know um, like static body, rigid body, what those things are? Uh, no, not quite. Okay, so if you want to have like a physical object in a game world that you can collide with and stuff, there's yep. typically like three different kinds. So there's gonna be a static body, which is one that doesn't move. Um, so that would be like walls or houses or the ground or something like oh, that. Sure. And then rigid body is something that bounces or moves. So like you have a ball or a grenade or something like that that's going to be physically active and bounce around and things like that you could have a rigid body and then but for characters if you're doing like a character you typically don't want them to bounce around you know have things physically interact them and have realistic physics you usually want them to have like custom physics um, determined by you know player input so what we use for that would be a kinematic body which can collide with walls and stuff and can push yeah. rigid bodies around but it doesn't get pushed around by other things so yeah, it's, a, it's a different like it's it's a it's a different physics altogether between each and individual. Yeah. Yeah. So All we're right, going to make some environment pieces. Um, so we're going to use a static body, and we're going to need to add a collision shape for it to define its shape. So I'd hit Control A on that, and then yeah. search for collision shape 2D, and then you just add that. And then we have to actually define what kind of shape it has. So if I select this, I can hit F, and it'll move the camera to where I have that node. Yeah. And then up here, we can define its shape. So there's different kinds. There's like a capsule, circle. Uh, we're going to do rectangle here. So you can just click that. Under Oh, you have to select the collision shape node, not the oh, static body. Right. Okay. And then, and then you, uh, right under shape, at the top right of it. Yeah, right here. And then you choose uh, rectangle. rectangle. Yeah. All right. And then uh, we also should give it like a graphic. So if you go down to where this icon is at the bottom, yeah, yeah icon PNG, you can drag that into the scene or you can, or yeah, just drag it onto the scene and that would add a sprite node. We could also do um, control A and search for a sprite and then. Um, yeah, Sprite, and then you could go over to where it says, oh, thanks for the sub, Nizart. So when you have that Sprite selected at the top right, you can see it says Texture, and you could drag the icon onto the texture, and that would give you, um, like that. yeah, yeah, that would give you the same thing. Oh, all so, right. So I'm just going to delete the icon Sprite I added. So you just select it and hit Delete. Yeah, you just want one of them. Um, is that one centered? Because that's the one you dragged in, right? So you can go yeah. over to transform over here. If yep. you click that, and that'll give you position, rotation, and scale. So you can just zero right. out. Zero. Yeah. You could also hit the arrow. So when you change it, it shows an arrow next to it, which means if you click that, it will return it to the default, which is zero. Oh, right. OK. So, okay, so now we have this in the scene. Uh, we could go over to visibility under here with the yep. sprite selected. 
and then you um, go under modulate and we could change the color uh, just click in here change to like black and where's modulate located and under and, uh, canvas item and right. visibility and then uh, yeah modulate just click the color and then you can choose what color you want and oh, it'll, all right. yeah and it'll tint the color so I mean you can choose anything since we're just going to be using this icon as like placeholder graphics we're going to use multiple different colors for different things until we get some actual graphics in so okay now we have this node um, let's make the collision shape match the shape of the icon so you can't see it right now because it's rendering behind the sprite and we can move it uh, so in the, the hierarchy here we can just move the sprite to be above the shape so you just click and drag Oh, just over the collision? Yeah. I mean, you could put it outside too, but I want to keep it as a child of the static body so I can move them sure. all at the same time. So with the collision shape, you can select these little points on it to change its size and just like drag it out to match the size of the, uh, the icon. You can also go over to the top right where it shows shape and uh, click that and then you can manually enter the uh, bounds of it. So right now it has, I think that's 64 by 64 because it just shows half of it. True, all right. And then, yeah, so that's the size of it. Then we can select the actual static body. Um, and there are different like manipulators up here at the top left. So like this is select mode where you select and drag things. Then there's this one, move mode, rotate mode, scale mode so I want to do scale mode so I'll hit S and then I could like drag scale wait is this the one that I use yeah I've been doing so much 3d I forgot how much the 2d or how the 2d works you can also use the shortcuts cuts up here where it shows next to uh, like scales S move yeah, is W yeah, yeah. Um, so like like I could scale this out and that would, you know, give me this shape. I could do W and move it. Uh, e would let me rotate it. So, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, I kind of like, I think this is what I've done. Okay, so if you select the sprite itself, um, once you, if you want to, oh, you can hit Control Z to undo everything, by the way. Yeah, I did. I think I undid the uh, collet. The, uh, oh, I see. Tape and said, so I had to fix that. All right, we're good. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, so I like actually. I usually work with the the sprite bounds because when you hit go into select mode, when you have a sprite selected, it gives you these um, points on the side that I think are a lot easier to work with. So yeah. what I can do is drag the sprite to be on top or outside, and then I can drag the static body to be inside it. And then if I scale it with these, I get uh, I can it'll scale the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, like that. Oh, okay. So if you select the icon, then you can scale it. Um, and yeah, and then I just use W and E to move it. And then if I go and if, if I hit Q, it'll go into it'll show me those dots that I can use to manipulate its size. So I'm going to name this sprite ground, I'll call it, in the inspector. And then I can hit control D to duplicate it. Then I could like, you know, move those around in the scene. Oh, so yeah, you're select. If you hit W to move, then it'll move whatever you have currently selected, because oh, if you hit Q, it'll let you select new things, which you know, it's a little annoying, but yeah. I guess it fits. So yeah, just move things around, control B, you know, make a little environment. And then, uh, let's see. You can also, when you're moving things or rotating things, you can hold control and it'll uh, like snap them at different increments. And you can- Oh, yeah change uh, if you go up to the three dots here next to these little magnets you can uh, configure use the or configure the different snap settings over here right hold on let the me see. three dots okay. to 
the left. Yeah, yep. there you go. Yeah. Configure snap, you can change how much position offset. Right now it's at zero for some reason on me. But I could do like 15, so it'll do 15 pixel offset. Um, let's see, I can show the grid. If you hit that, it'll show you the grid you're using. And then, uh, yeah. Where did you do the grid at? Oh, okay, I see. Right there. Yeah. It's also Shift G works. Oh, so it snaps it to locations according to the grid. Yeah, and you can change the grid, or the grid will change based on what your grid offset things were. Wait, grid offset, grid step. I forget what these are. Oh, grid step, I think, moves it from the center or point zero. Yeah. So we've got this. Let's uh, let's make a character. All right. So let's see. Go up to project on the top left, and then do project settings, and then input map. All and right. So this is there's a bunch of default input stuff set up. We're not going to use any of that. We're going to do. Um, so let's see. We want move left. So I'll just type in move left. And I use underscores because it's easier to work with. Um, text strings that are, uh, you know, no spaces in them. But yeah, just type in move left and then you would hit enter when you're done and it'll put it at the bottom of the list here. Right here. And then, yeah, and then also do move right, jump, um, exit, and restart. Move, move jump? Or just jump. Or just jump, okay. Yeah, I mean, you can, okay. yeah, you can name them what you want. It's just my naming convention that I use. And then what was the last one? Uh, move left, move right, jump, exit, and restart. Exit and restart. All right. And then you can go to this plus sign next to it, and it would be add event. So I'm going to use key. Yeah. And then you, so for left, I'm going to hit A. So I want to use A. You could also do like the arrow keys or anything. But yeah, hit A and then click the OK. And now it shows if you hit A, you'll move left. You can also add more events if you want. So I could do arrow keys as well. And uh, yeah, you can just define all the keys you want for everything. So yeah, jump, I typically use space. Exit, I would hit escape. Restart is R. Yeah. All right. That looks good. So then close that. And now we need to make a character. So I'm going to create a new tab up here, add a new scene. And then we'll yeah. create, uh, hit the plus sign, then search for kinematic body. 2D. Yep. And so. Right. Yeah, and I'll name this player, and I'll hit save, and just save that wherever. So remember what I said about kinematic body versus the other kinds? Yep. Okay, so yeah, so let's see, we'll add another node called a collision shape. And I think this one I'm going to make a capsule, that's usually a good shape for characters. So then add the shape at the top right. I mean, uh, top top right, there's the drop down that shows shape. When you have the collision shape, oh, there, there. yeah. And then, so the, there you go. Now you have a capsule shape. I'll also add a sprite. This will just be placeholder for now, but yeah. And I'm gonna, yeah, sprite. And you drop the icon on it. And I keep it outside. Um, I mean, not the sprite itself, the visual, but um, the sprite node, I keep it. Oh, yeah, yeah. So with that, you don't drop drop it into the scene. You would drag oh, okay. it to where it says texture at the top right. Oh yeah, yeah. And then I would put the node not as a child of collision shape, because you're gonna want to access graphics separately later on, for like right. animating and stuff. So like, just move it up, so it's um, yeah outside. There you go. Yeah, like that. Um, so, and then we can scale it too. If you hit Q, you can just like 
move it in. I'm going to turn off the grid snap. But yeah, just going to change the size. And also, typically, you want the bottom of a character to be at zero. So I'm going to move the, uh, the uh, collision shape directly up. And you can hold shift when you move it so it'll snap to like one axis. So if you hold shift and then move it straight up, it'll snap to the Y. Oh, like that, right? Yeah. So, and then you can also check its uh, transform. So like, um, make sure it's centered and stuff. Uh, so this collision shape, actually the capsule, if I click on it, it says it has a height of 20 and a radius of 10, which means Radius 10 would mean it's, I forget how they, I forget if, <laughs> let me just check the grid, I'll see how tall it is. That means it's one, two, three, four, five, 60, okay. So it's 20, so you double the radius, do that twice, plus the height would be 60. So that means it's 60 units tall, so I'd want to move it up to, wait, not, that doesn't make sense. I guess it's just 40 tall. Okay, so it's just the radius twice and then the height would give you the height of the capsule. And also negative is up in Godot, which is a little confusing. But yeah, yeah I just set the Y to be negative 20 and the X to be zero. And that'll make so the bottom of the capsules exactly at um, the zero point. All right, so we got that. Now we need to add some code to it. Um, so, let's see, uh, so if you click the, uh, this little paper with the plus sign, if you s or select the player node first, and, and then the you click the little, paper. yeah, so that'll create a script and you can name it here, just leave it as player, click create. So this gives us the default script here, um, this is just what it's auto fills everything in. So at the top it says extends kinematic body. So that means the script is going to be assuming that this class is a kinematic body 2D, which is correct, which will um, let you access methods and stuff from, uh, well, we'll get into that. But basically it, it lets the script know that we're a kinematic body. Working with that, yeah. Yeah. And then over here, I'm just going to delete these comments, but ready is called once when the game starts, basically. Um, so that's where we can do like initializing things. And then down here we have, uh, in it's commented out, you can see process. If you remove the, uh, the pound signs, that'll mean that this code will run. Um, so this is called process. It's run every single frame, once a frame. And uh, delta is, it passes in delta, which is the time since the last frame. And then it runs pass, which means do nothing. So it's just skipping that code. Okay. So what we need to do is we want to move left and right. So that's all we're gonna do for now. So if we go up to the top, do you know what variables are? No. In code? Okay, so a variable basically stores data. So like, um, like numbers or letters or things like that. So all right. if- we type in var and we'll say move speed equals, let's say, 100. So that means we're going to move it 100 pixels a second is, is what I want. But right now it's just a blink. It just says this, whenever we say the word move speed, we mean the number 100. And I put 0 0.0 so it knows that I want numbers with fractions. Because if I were to not put that, it would assume we're storing an integer, which is a whole number which behaves differently than fractions. So if I were to divide two integers, it would round to the nearest integer, whereas if I do dot zero, then it knows yeah. when you do a division round, or don't round, keep it as a fraction. So the this is how you define variables, is you just put var and then a name, and then you set it equal to something, and then it figures out what it's supposed to be based off of what you set it to be. Okay. So now we need to get our input. So let's see, we can do under, I don't know if we want to do it here. So if you're doing anything with physics or movement, you typically don't want to tie it to the frame rate because if somebody's frame rate changes, 
like their computer is going really fast or really slow or has spikes and lag or whatever, it could result in movement glitches where somebody moves really fast or really slow based on how fast their computer is. So, right, right, yeah. so what we can do is instead of process, we'll call it physics process. And that means, so physics process runs at a set rate no matter how fast or slow your computer is. It runs exactly 60 times a second. I think it's 60 in Godot by default. So it always runs 60 times a second and that means, yeah, so that this is where you'd want to do anything related to movement or physics. So then we need to get um, what direction to move in. So we can do if, um, and we'll type input dot is action pressed move left. Is action, oh, an input would be capital I. Okay. Okay, now it will work. Good. Yeah. So dot is action pressed, uh, should be no spaced, no space there. After action, no, no space? Or no space after the, is there a space? It looks like there's a space after the dot, after oh, input. Here. Okay, fixed. And then you and would then parenthesis, here. yeah. And then move left. So you can just hit the arrow. When it shows that pop up, that's like suggestions for things to put there. Yeah. Um, so you can, yeah, just arrow key down and go to uh, move left. It's a little awkward in here. But arrow oh, key down. Right or you can double click it. Yeah, and then it'll autofill. So, um, and then at the end, put a colon. And then you do new line. then just hit enter to do new line. And then uh, right now you can see it's complaining that we don't have any code in here. So we can just put pass to make it be quiet um, right now. And then I'll go over what this, what this means. So basically input is a class that has a bunch of predefined code in it, right? And I, if I hold control and click it, click the word input, yep. it'll take me to that class. So right now this is the input class. And this tells us all the code that's set up in here. Um, so you control click on it. There you go. So this shows everything we can do here. Like, um, and if you look at this list, um, so it says like, uh, is action just pressed, right? And then, or is action pressed? Is set mouse mode, set, I don't know what most of these things are, but we can like scan over here to get a general idea. And then if you wanna learn more, you can click on the actual method and it'll tell you more details of what it does. Like get action strength, returns a value between zero and one, representing the intensity of a given action. So if you're on a joypad, the further away the analog stick is from the dead zone, the closer the value is to right. one. So it's a that's gradual like, movement. Yeah, so if we wanted to use that, we could, um, actually I think we could use this here for like our move key. It would just return a flat zero or a flat one because we're using a keyboard instead of something that's analog. but. We can just check if we're actually pressing the key. But yeah, this is, um, whenever you see a class like that, you can control click and see like everything in it. And so, yeah. And then we're just saying we do dot is action pressed. Um, if you click back at the top right, there's an arrow that shows back. In the top right, right here. Right here. Yeah, and that'll take you back to where you were. And then of course, yeah, right where you were, this also shows where you just were or places you have visited. In the oh, code. right, yeah. So it shows we were at the input class, but we're also at our custom player class. So the input, it shows, okay, we're referencing the input class, then we say dot, and then we put in the input method we want. So like, um, we wanted in, is action pressed, so we could actually go to input, look at is action pressed right here, and it says, okay, when you wanna do this, it's gonna say is action pressed, oops, uh, I mean to click that. Uh, hang on. Okay, there we go. So is action pressed. So it shows right here um, that what's on the left. Oh, that's annoying. I can't highlight it. But the the part on the left here. This is what it's going to return. So that means it's going to return a boolean or a bool, which means true or false. So it's going to return true or false based on if the action is pressed. And then over here, it's in parentheses, it says, 
you pass in an action which is going to be a string which is text string is the word for text in computer science and stuff so and then if I click on the actual method I can learn more so it returns true if you're passing the action event and yeah uh, okay. gives you some more details but yeah now if I go back to player we can see we defined that method or we broke down that name of that method and then we pass in move left which is what we defined um, that action for uh, the A key so if you press A on the keyboard this whole thing will return true if we're not pressing A it's going to return false and then um, so that's what that does right here but then before it we put if and then after we put a colon which means it's now an if statement so that means um, if this is true it'll run this code here where it says pass actually we could put I'll put a print statement here and then I'll put test in it right print parentheses and then yeah in quotation marks put test and so now um, I can run this scene so if I hit F6 it'll run uh, that scene right there and then and then if you hit the A key it'll say it'll print out test see at the bottom as long as you're holding yeah. A it'll print it out so that means um, this code is being reached so it's like right. okay good we can also do else and then print uh, not pressing or something So you would want the else to be unindented. So uh, go before it and then backspace one. Like that and then... Uh, so move your cursor up to the same line that else is on and then yep. hit shift tab. There you go, that's where you want it. So the else should be in the same line as if. Oh right, okay. And then I can press enter and then print not pressing? Yeah. All right. Okay. And then if we hit F6, and then it's printing. So you can see at the bottom it's outputting not pressing. Oh, and right. if I hold A, it's outputting test. Does this whole part here make sense to you with the if yeah. statements and stuff? Yep. And do you understand why or why it's on this line here and or why it's indented here versus not indented over here? No, I don't understand. I don't understand that. Well, okay. Why would they have to be indented? Okay, so there's something called scope. Um, so when you um, in Godot, that's determined by how indented it is. So if I hit tab. You can see it, it does an indent. I can backspace to delete it, right? Yeah. Or I can tab, shift tab to backspace. So this is the outermost scope, which means if I define variables or functions or anything out here, anything inside anything else can reference those. Um, if I were to define a variable out here or inside the physics process, so whatever equals one, ASD equals one, then I can access ASD throughout this entire um, anything that is within physics process and that is yeah. on yeah anything that's within physics process can now reference or do stuff with ASD like I could do print ASD and then if I were to run that um, if I hold one it prints one. Oh, I guess I should have explained that or how to use variables but um, basically anything inside of here can reference anything out here uh, okay whoops i deleted that but if i were to define asd in here um right in here then um this print method could not access it right like it would throw an error and say that doesn't exist it's not in the current scope whereas okay. if it were out here i could because it's um because one, it's defined before this code is called. So if I were to put it over here, it would say that doesn't exist. And it's also out, it's at a higher level or like it's it's less um, indented. Like if I were to... Okay, okay. Like if I were to do another print in here, like if, I don't know, true var uh, e equals three or something, 
then this could not print it because that's um, higher up. It's like basically it runs this code, it defined B, and then it's like gets to here and it's like, okay, we're done with this part, forget about B, like delete that from memory because that yeah. part's done. Um, does that make sense? Am I like. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, yeah, it makes sense. Okay, I mean, it'll make also the more you like do code and stuff. Yeah. It just kind of like naturally you get to understand it more. Oh, absolutely. All right, so, okay, so we have move left here and now we want to get move right. So I can, I can highlight this and hit control C and then control V over here. I can also just click on the line itself and hit control C and that'll copy that entire line. And if I do control V, it'll paste that entire line. And then I'm just gonna change left to right over here. And then uh, I can put pass, whoops, in there. Uh, okay, so uh, tab to, yeah, in the, or backspace from there. There you go. So yeah, just get to what I have here. There you go. And you can delete the else and the print. Where would I, where, where are you stating? Uh, line 14 and 15, you can delete those lines. Okay. You can also, when you click on a line, you can hit Control X and it'll cut that line. Was that all of them? Uh, it's close enough to what I have. So what we need to do now is get the direction to actually move. So we're going to define var move direction and we'll just say one. So I'm going to, in this case, one is going to be right, negative one is going to be left, zero is going to be standstill. So equals one, yeah. And then, oh wait, I don't want to do one. Equals zero, actually. All right. So yeah, start, so default is standstill. Then if we're moving left, I'm gonna say move direction minus equals one. So. Yeah. Right under move left, right? Yeah, so just get rid of your print statements and then, yeah, I'll put that there. So you do minus equals one. And you want to have it indented, so it'll... Um, oh, looks like you hit the insert key on your keyboard. What? Um, you want to indent that, right? Oh. Yeah. Um, on your keyboard, hit the insert key. I'm not sure where it, who it is on yours, but when you see that underscore line, that means you're in insert mode. Yeah, okay, there you go. So, uh, oh wait, no, put it back. Yeah, there you go. When you're in insert mode, it deletes text in front whenever you type. Okay. So go to where the equal sign and put a minus sign right before it. Yep. So, oh, it looks like you have yeah, yeah, minus equals and then a one. So this is the same thing as saying, or it's basically saying take the move direction variable and subtract one from it. So in this case, if we hold down the key to move left, it's gonna take move direction, which is zero, and it's gonna yep. subtract one from it. So now, so now it will equal one, or negative one. And then we're gonna do the same thing under move right, except we're gonna do plus equals one. I delete the pass variable? Yeah. Pass isn't a variable. All it means is just skip this. And okay, right. we just put it there as like a placeholder so that the, um, the, the code uh, stop at some point. Or so that the code, well, cause if I don't, so if I have a blank thing after the uh, input, then it throws an error here and you can see it throws an error and then I won't be able to run my game. So if I want like a placeholder while I'm testing something else out, I could just put pass so that okay. the uh, thing doesn't get upset. Okay, so now um, you can clear out those empty lines on your screen. So like line 14, 16, 18, right? Just, um, yeah, 
You can also just click and hit Control X and it'll delete that line. There you go, yeah. So, so do you see what's um, going on here code-wise? Can you explain what's happening? Uh, the, uh, like when it comes to, when you, when you, when you add, when you press an action, like move left, which we've uh, set mm -hmm. to A, like the, it will, uh, the move direction will go to, as long as it's pressed, it'll go minus one, correct? Yes, it'll equal minus one. And, and then is the one is the one when you press it, and then when you let it go, is that what it is? Um, so it's going to be zero. So we define the variable inside the physics process. So that means every physics frame, we define this variable and we set it to be equals equal to zero. And then when we press move left, it's going to subtract one from it, so that'll equal negative one. I mean, I could have I could have basically said equals negative one like this, and just set it directly equal to it. Oh yeah. But I like to subtract one because it lets me do a, a neat trick, sort of. Um, oh, also, your line 15 should be move right. I should say move right. At the end. Oh, true. Yeah, there you go. Um, okay, yeah. Sorry, continue what you're explaining it. Yeah, so... It's according. It's accordingly to the how, like the inputs work accordingly to the, to the to the variable. So if you, it's if if you were to press A, it would. You would have. Um, you would have the move direction go accordingly to. The input that you press. So if if the value is at zero, mm -hmm. and then you and then if the action is pressed, with meaning A. To move left, it would take away. It would subtract one, mm -hmm. and then if you wanted to move right, it would go the opposite, right? Yeah, it would add one. Yeah, it would add one. What would happen if you press both keys at the same time right now? I don't know. Okay, both do the, a, both a and D. Yeah, at the same time, what would happen? What would move direction be set to? Zero. Yep. Yeah, because you're adding. Because you subtract one and then you add one. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Sense. So if I were to just directly set move direction to be negative one or positive one, you just stand perfectly still. Yeah, but if if so with this in this case I'm subtracting one and then I'm adding one. But if I were to directly set it to be negative one, like this, yeah, or like this, right, positive one or negative one, what would happen if I pressed both keys at the same time? Can you take a guess? It would. It wouldn't go to one, would it? It would. Okay. Because move right's happening after move left, so it's overriding oh, move direction and setting it to one. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I like to have it like this because I think it makes more sense to have the character stand still. If you yeah, press naturally, you, naturally, it it, it would have. You'd think that the everything, every, every type would come after the equal since it's almost like a sort of like. A confirmation of it, like being like, like if negative one or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I, I never would have expected it to to add the uh, the value before the equals. You know? Oh, I see. Yeah, this is yeah, this is like um, so like a minus or a plus. Those are called operators, and yeah. so you can do like one plus three or whatever. But um, if you want to like just directly quickly set a variable, um, it's it's like shorthand. So this is the same. Whoops. This is the same as writing that, right? Move direction equals move direction minus one. That's okay. the same thing. It's just same shorthand thing. for writing that. Um, yeah. Maybe I shouldn't have showed you that. Maybe, I don't know if that's like a beginner friendly thing to show, but it just. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but this this obviously you want to make it more compact, more more. Compact. Yeah, it's more readable. Yeah, less yeah. wordy. Okay, so we have the direction we're moving in. Now we need to actually move. So um, there's a method. So if we, we have this kinematic body 2D class, we can control click on it and see what methods we have. 
Um, so control click that. So if you scroll down, there's a bunch of different methods here. Specifically, we want these three. Um, so if you look at, there's move and collide, move and slide with, uh, move and slide, and then move and slide with snap. Um, so move and collide is like the most basic. So it just moves and then it will move your character in a direction by an amount. And then it will, when it hits something, it stops. Move okay. and slide. Uh, or, I mean, you can click on them and see more details on what they do. It goes in depth. Move and slide will move until you hit something and then it'll slide along that surface. So for example, if you run like into a wall, like imagine a top-down game and you run into a wall at an angle, uh, with yeah. move and collide, you would just stop. But with move and slide, you would run into the wall and then you would slide along it a bit too. Um, okay. So that's typically better for most character movement um, is to use move and slide because it feels more intuitive to the player. And then move and slide with snap is typically used in platformer games where if you're like running um, on sloped surfaces, it will, if you run to the right, imagine, and then the slope goes down a little bit, um, yep. instead of like flying through the air, you'll like snap to the ground when you run down the slope okay. and it'll auto account for that. We're just gonna use move and slide because it's simpler to work with right now. Yeah. Um, so we go to player, so we're going to just type move and slide, and then, yeah, and then parentheses. Double click, or hit enter when you have it highlighted. Yeah, and now you can see a pop-up that shows you what it needs here. So there's a whole bunch of things. What we just need is linear velocity and then the up direction is what we need. So do you know what 2D vectors or 3D vectors are? Do you know what vectors are in general? Yeah. So explain what a 2D vector would be. Is it a, accordance to like, uh, like graphics? Yeah, it could be graphics or just like a position in a yeah. two dimensional world. No, I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking according to like like Adobe Illustrator or something like that, like mm. obviously like vector graphics or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. So like, um, but this would obviously differ in accordance to the, uh, the objects or whatever. So like, um, imagine a vector is like a, a either a position or a direction. So like, imagine you have a, what's the quickest paint thing I can get up. Um, so imagine you have, a grid right yeah and you can define positions on that so you could be like all right let's say um, I didn't want that to be red uh, let's see okay so you have let's say oh, damn. hey that's annoying it like changes the color <laughs> while yeah. you're okay so we have this we have this grid brush. Oh, come on. Change the color on me. Not like there. old school paint. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> just want something that loads quick. Okay, so we have our grid here and we can say that we have all these squares on it. So let's yeah. say that right here at the um, we're going to I made a red and green lines. We can define these as like position 0. Yeah. So this is zero, zero. So it's zero on, we can call the red one X, which is horizontal, and the green one Y, which is vertical. So, and then you can go up, this is one, this is two, this is negative one. Actually, it's reversed in Godot, so I'll do, this is negative one, this is negative two, this is one, this is two, right? And then on the X, this would be one, this would be two, negative one, negative two. Okay. And then any position in this world can be defined by two numbers, right? Like this over here is two on the X and one on the Y. So that gives right here, that gives us this position. And then we can get um, like, I don't know, even in between positions like this would be negative 1.5 on the X and uh, negative 
uh, like wait, this position right here, I guess. This would be negative uh, 1.5 on the Y, for example, right? So that's yeah. that position. So you understand how the positions work? Yeah. Okay, and then you can also count it as a direction. So imagine um, uh, a line pointing from zero to that position, right? So that's, yep. um, or an arrow pointing from there to there. So that gives us a direction. So when you have your character, you can imagine, okay, we have our position, which is defined by 2D vector. We also want to move it. So if our position's here and we want to move it to here, we can have a movement uh, vector that's added, or we have this arrow that's just this travel direction and we add okay. it to the position and we get the new position. Uh, so what we want what we want right now is we don't need to worry about its position we have a movement method all we need to pass in is how much we want to move it per second movement slide goes by per second so we just want to move horizontally so we're just going to pass in an x value of our move speed times the direction because our direction is going to be zero one or positive or negative one so if it's a one that means we're going to move to the right if it's negative one we move to the left the left yeah um, uh, but it requires you to have a 2D vector as, as the input for our movement, but we're just going to leave Y as zero. Does that all make sense? Yeah. So how would it, how would that be accordingly to like slopes and stuff? Like if, would you have to change the vector direct, like the vector then? Like um, the direct? no, cause we only, for A and D, we're only moving horizontally, right? We only okay. move left and right, flat left and right. Um, okay. And you can like move and slide with snap that I told you about. That would automatically yeah. snap you to the slope, so you wouldn't have to yeah. worry about it. But you're always going to move the same speed left or right. That's typically how any platformer game works. Even like 3D platformers, like Super yep. Mario, you're moving across like slopes and surfaces, but you're still moving the same direction horizontally always. Okay. Pretty much. I, yeah. There's no need to like complicate it and like get the angle the slope you're on and move at a set speed down that slope it's just more it's not it's not really noticeable to the player and it's just yeah. yeah it's a lot more work so we'll define a 2d vector this will be var move vec say and i'll put vector 2 and then parentheses and oh those should both be unindented the uh line 17 and 18. Uh, you can just hit shift tab on both lines. Both move and slide and... Yeah, you want them to be um, just one indentation. That means they're part of just physics process. They're not counted as being inside the if statement. Because if you All had right. them the way you, they were before, that code would only get run when you're holding the move right key. Vector two, yeah, and it should be capital the vector, capital V, capital V, and no space between R and two. Yeah. Okay, and then we need to put in what the x is and what the y is. So our x in here is just going to be our move direction times our move speed. And so for times, uh, it's the symbol above eight. You would hit shift eight on your keyboard. And then uh, times move speed. And then we need to set the Y. So you do a comma and then hit zero. Yeah, oh yeah, comma and then zero. Yeah. And then you can copy move vector into move and slide. Oh, I spelled move. I, I spelled it with a S, not a V. Oh. I mean, there it's fine. It doesn't really matter what its name is, just for whatever's readable to you. All right. And so move and slide, or move yeah, back. put it in the parentheses. So now that's actually all it needs. Move and slide just needs what what our movement vector is, um, but it's going to by default assume that there is no, um, I guess, up direction. There's no floor. Um, it's, yeah, it's not going to assume that there's any direction that's up, so it's not going to be able to do correct um, like slide calculations. So we can just hit comma, and we'll put in a vector two, and then put period, and then up in all capitals. 
yeah and then dot and then up yeah so you notice that vector 2 it's highlighted the same way that input is that means vector 2 is also a class and if I yep. hit control and click on it you can see um, I mean there's a bunch of methods in here for doing uh, linear algebra math stuff vector math um, and then there's also constants which are predefined values so like one of these is vector 2 dot up which is just a vector 2 that's 0 on the x and negative 1 on the y so it's just a vector that points straight up so we can just access that um, to use for when we're calling move and slide here um, and I think okay so we can put our player in the scene and we should be able to move now so if you go over to world oh yeah we'll we'll get it working and then we can go over anything so yeah click your world scene at the top left and then you click 2D to get out of the script view at the middle top. Yeah. And then um, click the world node here. And then click, uh, see this, I don't know what this symbol is supposed to be. I think it's like a chain. Yeah, so you click that, and then you'll see all your scenes you've created, and one of them is player, so you can double click that. And then there's your player. And then, oh yeah, you can use scroll wheel to uh, scroll wheel to zoom in and out, and middle mouse click and drag to like move around. Yeah, so I'm just, more familiar with that. Yeah. Okay, and then just move your player wherever you want um, on the scene. Make sure. Oh wait, there's no gravity, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then we can hit F F6 will run this scene, but you can also hit F5, and that will let you choose a main scene. Um, so like I'll. Hit that, select a main scene, and then choose world. Yeah, just double click that or hit open. And then, yeah, so that's, oh right, the camera. So the default camera is set like over, yeah, if you just close that. Um, yeah. If you zoom out a bit, and if you hide the grid view, you can see there's like a blue line you might have to zoom. Yeah, you see that blue yeah. line? That's the yeah. default camera view. So we can okay. add in your own camera since you have your stuff kind of off the screen. So you just hit Control A, add a node. Actually, let's add it on the player because you probably want the camera on the player. So go to your player um, scene. Uh, go to the actual scene. You can also click um, on the player. See that there's like a little, I don't know what that is, like a movie like oh, cut yeah. symbol. Yeah, click that and it'll switch to the player scene. So, and then you'll hit Control A on the player and type in camera, go click on camera 2D. And then, uh, so that gives you a camera node. If you zoom out, you can see the camera bounds. Uh, if you zoom out farther, see the, yeah, that's showing right. what the camera sees. Um, and then also with the camera click, click current over there, make sure that's checked all the way on the right. Click current up like three. Yeah, there you go. So that's the current camera now. Um, and then don't have to worry about anything else for now. We'll just have that. So then you can run your scene again and your camera should be centered on your player. You can just hit yeah, F5. Uh, yeah. So there you go. Now if we hit A and D, you should move. Oh, yeah, look. yeah, you can see you're moving now. And uh, you didn't set up any slopes on your scene, but you can see on mine, if I hit this slope, I move up it, right? I slide up it pretty well. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, like that. So let's, uh, let's do gravity, I guess. Or actually, is there anything here that you're like confused by and you wanna ask questions about in the current code? Uh, regarding the code, no. For the most part, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a matter of doing it more than over time. You know what I mean? So yeah, that way you could beat in, beat into your head like how the, the how the general behavior of it works, right? But uh, no, I think it, it, it makes enough sense to me where okay on how the inputs work. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for me, it took like I think like two or three weeks of watching tutorials before I like kind of like got it yeah. a little bit um all right so we want to do 
gravity and jumping. So if you go hit your player, you can hit yeah either script or you can, when you're on your player node, see the player node I have here? There's a little script next to it. I can click that little paper thing next to the player node. Uh, yeah, right, right there. Yeah. yeah, if you click that, it opens the script as well. So let's okay. define uh, gravity. So I'm going to say var gravity equals, I think, we'll say 98 pixels, right? So 98 pixels per second is going to be the acceleration from gravity. Um, and then I want to do, we're going to do some physics here because it makes everything feel better. Um, we're going to do var velocity. And this is going to be a blank vector two. So if I just do velocity equals vector two and then parentheses, that'll give you a vector two that has zero as the x and zero as the y. Um, so okay. that means our velocity is zero on horizontally and vertically right now. Um, and then one more, we'll do var jump force. I'll call it and I'll set it to like at on 200 or something. All right, so now um, what we want to do is, um, let me see. So instead of move vec down here, um, we can set, we'll say velocity.x is equal to move direction times move speed. And then we can just delete our current move vector. And I'll put velocity in it, or I'll just guide you through as you write it. So yeah, move direction times move speed. And then delete the uh, line that has move vector on it. All of it? Yeah. Oh, what's... Something's mistyped on your screen. Oh, I think... Did you mistype move vector? Or move direction. Well, I added I added a, a plus here by mistake. Wait, what happened here? Yeah, I just retyped. It's a screen. mess. Yeah, it's a mess. All right. There you All right, go. there you go. And then replace um, in the move and slide. Replace move vector with velocity. So yeah, just paste that over. Yeah, velocity. You can just hit enter when it brings the highlight up. Okay, so now it's setting our velocity x. So this is doing the same thing as before. But now we can do, um, let's see, we want to do velocity x, we want to do velocity y. So velocity dot y, so we're going to access the vertical component of our velocity. And we're going to set that to equals, actually we're going to set it to subtract gravity times delta. So minus equal gravity times delta. So delta is the time since the last frame. So um, it's going to, yeah, it's just basically applying downwards acceleration to our velocity. Um, if you're, okay. do you know what the kinematic equations are? Did you ever learn about that? No. So it's um, basic physics equations for determining, I guess, generic Newtonian physics stuff. Like if I throw a ball at this speed, with this much acceleration or something, where is it going to land, right? This is the start position, yep. this is the end. So that's just a good thing to look up eventually when if you want to get more in-depth on game dev, is yep. just to learn the kinematic equations. But in this case, we're just accelerating downwards, and that's what this does. We get the time since the last frame, times our gravity, subtract that by our velocity. So now we'll have gravity affecting us. Actually, if I run the scene right now, Oh, whoops, I'm going the wrong way. Because negative is up, I always forget. Oh, um, I would actually have to do <laughs> plus equals gravity. So now if I run it with plus equals, you can see I move down always. But um, one problem with this is that it's actually, it's continually applying the gravity. So like eventually, it's applying a massive amount of gravity now because it just keeps increasing the force downwards. So what I yeah. want to do is I need to check if I'm on the ground. And then if I do, just set my current velocity to be a very low amount. Um, so like I can do 
if is on floor. Um, so this is a method that um, if is on floor, it returns true if the bottom of your character is touching something and false if you're not. So it just tells if you're on the ground or not. So what I can do here is just set um, velocity y to equal zero if we're on the floor. So yeah, in there you would set it to be zero. So um, the order here is actually kind of important because uh, is on floor returns true or false based on if you collided with a floor the last frame. And just basically it sees what you've collided with and sees if the bottom of your character collided with something that is within a certain slope. So if you like hit a really steep slope, it doesn't count you as being on a floor. Um, but it only updates after move and slide is called, or even if it was called the previous frame, right? So what happens is if we didn't have any negative, like if we didn't have any downward velocity, this would not hit anything on the floor and would assume it's false. So right now I've set velocity to be zero and then literally the next line down, um, we apply a little bit of gravity. So that way um, it will still have a little bit of downward momentum. So okay. that way um, it'll still update if it's on the floor or not. Um, so now if I run it, if I hit F5, you can see my character is able to move up and down the slopes. You actually see I'm kind of bouncing down the slopes because I'm kind of, the character uh, is lightweight. Yeah, you see that? Like down the, okay. it gets a little air time there. If I had done move and slide with snap, that wouldn't happen. But I'm not worried about it for this right now. But yeah, it's maintaining like a set. It doesn't like accumulate gravity when I stand still. So next up we can do jumping. So all we're gonna do for jump is we just check, um, where are we gonna put this? I'll put it up here. If input dot is action just pressed jump, then we're gonna say velocity dot y equals uh, jump force. Uh, so you want to do just pressed. So is action pressed is returns true every single frame that you're holding down a button. Is action just pressed returns true on the only once on the frame that you actually press the the key down. So if input input dot is action underscore just underscore pressed. Okay. Adjust goes after action. Oops. Yeah. Yeah, and then you would put parentheses jump. Okay, there you are, okay. Oh, and yeah, you want the quotations. And then input should be capital I. There you go. Okay, so now it's going to return true on the frame that we press the jump key, which is spacebar. So then you just set velocity y to equal our jump force. Oh wait, that should be negative jump force since negative is up. So yeah, just you can put a minus sign in front of the word jump force. Um, but there is one problem here. So basically what's going on is saying, okay, set our velocity to be jump force. But then two lines down is checking if we're on the ground and then it's resetting our velocity. So what's gonna happen is if we're on the ground and we press jump, it's gonna see we're on the ground and then it's gonna overwrite what we just did and set it to zero. So just cut this and move it above it. So that, that gets called before. Put it above the, uh, it's action just press jump. Yeah, or I mean, not that, not that part, put uh, lines 23 and 24. Okay. No, you would leave velocity dot y equals negative jump force goes after the if is action just pressed. It's um, the 
So just hit Control Z a few times. Control Z, uh, one, couple more times. There, yeah, one more. No wait. Now indent okay. that line. Indent. Uh, so just go. Yeah, put the minus sign there and then indent the line once. Um, can there be any space after the minus or just minus jump force? I think it, it probably could have a space, but I don't think it matters. Um, but uh, go to the beginning of the line and hit tab. That way it's, yeah, now it's inside the if statement. And then highlight 24 and 25, highlight both those lines. Done. And then control X and then go to line 20 and control V. Yeah, so now it um, resets your velocity if you're on the ground, and then okay. and then the frame after it'll set the velocity if you're jumping. So now if you run, wait, is that? I'm getting an error on 23. Space is used before tabs on the line. Oh yeah, get rid of that. Wait, where is this space? Oh, uh, just hit backspace until you get to the all the way to the left, and now hit tab twice. There you go. Uh, oh, you need a colon at the end of the line too. Yeah. All right, now if you run the scene, if you hit jump, your character will jump. It's pretty floaty right now. We can change the jump force and the gravity and stuff. But now uh, try hitting space while you're in the air. Yeah. Oh, you know, you're just continuously. Yeah. yeah. It lets you infinity jump. So we'll have to add a ground check. Also, I'm going to turn up the gravity to like 200 because it's too floaty. Oh, it's still too floaty. Hang on. I'd like to have really like sharp gravity. I'm trying to figure out a good amount. So 500, um, maybe. 400 on the jump force. 400 on the jump force? I'm just messing around with different values. You can try changing them. Just, yeah, give yourself different values. I like things that are like sharp and responsive and give. Um, let's see. Oh, also, here's a trick I forgot to mention. Um, at the beginning of your variable, you can type export. So like next to move speed, I can type export. I can do that on gravity and we'll put that on jump force as well. And now, um, yeah, like so. There you go. Now, if you go to your player scene and you click the node here, so just all the way on the left, yeah, just click the player node. Now on the right, you can see you can actually set those values from here. Oh, okay. Yeah. You could also set them in this world scene, if you go to world scene, if you click the player. Right on. The, you can right also here. set them, but that would just set them only for this scene, like only for the instance of the player right here. Like if you were to have the player node in another scene, it would yeah. still have whatever the defaults were. But if you set them in the player node scene itself from the editor, then it'll be the same across every level that they're in. Um, okay, so we have these set. Now let's. Now we just need to check if we're on the floor. So what I can do is actually just copy this part where it says is on floor, uh, line 20 for you. So don't include the F part, just get the part where it says is on floor. And then you can put it um, right after your jump. You can type and is on floor. Or yeah, paste. You'll need to get rid of the colon before the and. There you go, yeah. So now when we jump, it'll check if we're on the floor before it applies the, uh, the jump force. So now if you run it, you'll see we can't jump when we're in the air. All right. All 
All right, so we have basic platformer movement now. So we can, uh, I guess, let's see, you want to do shooting and aiming? Yeah, why not? So let's see, how are we going to set this up? So for aiming and shooting, we want to get um, the angle from the player to the mouse, and we need to rotate a gun. So let's add in a new node here. So on the player, control A, add in a new node. On the player world player, uh, just go into the player scene, yeah, and then add in the node, yeah. Okay, yeah. So add in a node two D. So this is just a blank two D node. There's nothing special about it. Um, it just has a position and a rotation and a scale, basically. So this is going to be, let's say, our um, I don't know weapon base. We'll call it. So this will be what weapons go under. And so you can see in the scene itself here, there's a little cross thing where it is. Yeah. So we can move that up since probably you'd want the arm or like the rotation point for the guns to be up more higher on the player. So you can just move it straight up to like right there. And then I'm going to add another node I'll call gun as a child of that. So just select the weapons base, control A, node 2D, and then name it gun, I guess. Um, yeah. So like if I wanted multiple guns, I could like have like a machine gun, like a, it would be like shotgun, you know, pistol, whatever. I could name it like that. That's kind of, okay. I go for like typically modular setups like this, but in this case, we'll just have one gun called gun. And I'll add a sprite under it and put the icon on it. And I'll scale it something like this. And you want to make sure it's a child of the gun node. But yeah, like that? yeah, like that. Okay. If you select the uh, gun, make sure that the X is like, or make sure that the sprite, yeah, yeah, is like at a good point. So if you rotate the weapons base, you can see that it's rotating everything here, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, and oh, also you could change the color of this if you want, just visibility, modulus, I'll give it like green or something. Visibility, under canvas item, yeah. Make it, make it purple. Yeah. Okay, so. Let's see, um, so we want to rotate this. So if we go into our code, into our script, yep. we need to get, first we need a reference to our weapons base. So we're going to type in um, up at the top, on ready var weapon, oops, weapon base. equals and then you'll do dollar sign weapon base and you can have it auto complete yeah just hit enter there yeah so on ready means when the scene loads run this because you can't get a reference to a node until the scene loads so you always have to if it's outside here like this it's not in a method. You have to type on ready before the variable name. Um, but yeah, now this this um, variable weapon base references our weapon base node here. So now we can have it rotate to face um, our mouse. So to do that, let's uh, 
let's define a method for that. So if you go in the script, go down to the bottom here, and we'll type a function, or just func, uh, and we'll call it, uh, I don't know, point weapon at mouse. You could call it something else like, I don't know, face mouse or something. Point weapon and mouse. There you go, yeah. And then new line. There you go. Okay, so this is going to be where we do all the math and stuff for handling pointing the weapon base at the mouse. So what we need to do is we need to get the position. Well, we need to get the angle between these two points. And so there's some trigonometry and stuff that um, is involved, but it's not really important to understand it. All we need to do is we need to get a vector that points from the weapon base to the mouse position. So we can do uh, var vec to mouse, I'll call it, and this will be equal to we get mouse get global mouse position minus weapon base dot global position. That's pretty good. Yeah, that looks good. So what this does is, so weapon base global position, that gives the weapon base's position in global coordinates. And then we also get the mouse's position in global coordinates. And then if you have two points, you can get the direct, or you can get a line pointing from one to the other by subtracting the goal point from the start point. So in this case, the mouse position minus the weapons position, now that gives us a line pointing, uh, yeah, from one to the other. So we have a vector pointing to the mouse position. Does that make sense or is that too wordy? Uh, I could do like a global, diagram. Global position is like obviously like like more than just the scene, right? Like it's it's all throughout. So like the mouse. Global position would be like, um, local position is like, so this gun, its local position is zero. Right, if I look yep. under transform, it's zero because it hasn't moved relative. That's its position relative to the uh, weapon base, whereas global is relative to the entire scene, right? So like this is zero globally. So yeah. its weapon's position globally is actually like, I don't know, negative 27 or something, right, on the Y. Okay. And then... Oh, somebody in chat said, destination minus me. That gives you the vector pointing at some. So if my mouse is up here, that's this point. And then our gun position is over here. We get this line pointing this way to the mouse by taking the destination position minus the gun position. Okay. And then um, trigonometry, basically there's something you can do where if you treat this like a triangle, a right triangle, so this would be like the long side and you have one side like this and one side like this you can get this angle here I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor very yeah, well but I am. I'm watching it. okay so yeah we can get the angle here by using arc tangent um, which you would just do I think it's I always like mix them up but I think it's a tan to and I think it's vector to mouse dot it's one of these vector mouse dot X dot y or I might have to like switch switch these but um basically I do weapon base dot global rotation equals arc tangent of um, this vector you have to pass in the x and the y separately so I won't be putting that one though right no you can oh I'll just I'm not sure if it's gonna have the correct angle but I'll just mess with it after we but it'll give some angle that's almost correct and then um Global rotation. rotation, yeah. And then, and then, and then. I know there's an angle method directly in vectors, but 
it never works right when I use it so I just I always use the trigonometry way So now we have to actually. So all things considered, it's, it'll tell you where you messed up. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what's nice about editors. But the worst part is when they don't tell you, because sometimes yeah, that yeah. happens and it's like error. It's like where? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now we have to actually uh, run this method here, right? So we can just get the name of it and put it right there, with the parentheses. So that's going to get called within physics process. There you go. There you yeah. Go. Do you understand what's going on with functions, like how that works? Not in, not clearly, but okay. I think that overall, it's just, it's more like, it's more like you're, you're, you're speaking, you're obviously talking to the, to the system. You're just trying to give it like, like a command, so to speak. Yeah. Like with if this happens or whatever and pass and variables mm -hmm. and all this function, you're obviously just having like a kind of like direct command with everything after is obviously like the um, the fun the, the the connection to the command that you're giving. That I mean, obviously with the colors with all the uh, with the color variables that it has within the language, it makes sense like that those would obviously be on a higher hierarchy than everything else okay where like it obviously wouldn't work without without those without the variables or the if functions and all that stuff okay um so like the way i think of a function is it's basically um like a stand-in for so like we wrote all this code here right and yeah when we say this when we call this function it's it's the exact same thing as if i were to copy paste this code in here and delete that right but yeah. i like to have it in a separate method like this because well one if we wanted to call this multiple times in different spots you know we yeah. could do that and it would be e a lot easier than copy and pasting this in five different spots um no true and then also if we wanted to change something like let's say i'm like oh actually i got this wrong i want to put a minus sign there then if I copy and paste this in like five different spots, I would have to go to all five of those spots and yeah. then put minus signs in each one of those spots. So this lets me very easily like duplicate code. And it okay. also makes it easier to read because it's like I have a set spot where it's like this handles pointing the gun at the mouse. That's it. That's all this does. And it's just in this one area, this is where I'm going to handle that. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like just a readability thing also duplication and readability. Yeah, so you don't have all that clutter. All that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so let's test and see if this works now. So if I just run the scene, you can see, okay, so I did get it wrong. You can see it's flipped, right? Yeah. yeah. So I just need to mess with the values, figure out which one I got wrong. I forget if it's, it might be Y and then X. Let me see. Okay, yeah, it is Y. So it'd be Y then X, not X then Y. All right, it'll be harder that way. <laughs> okay, yeah, now, now yeah. good. Okay, so now we have the gun pointing at it. So now we can actually make it shoot. Um, so let's see, do you want to do hit scan or do you want to do projectiles? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know, I guess we could do hit scans. I, a projectile sounds like physical nightmare a physics nightmare uh, it's a little more work <laughs> it's not like a whole lot more work but it is a little more um whichever you think is appropriate i think it, I'm, I'm down for whichever i'm trying to think because if i did hit scan it's like easy to see but then or it's easy to do but then to visualize it is yeah because you'd have to like make it like spawn a hit particle so you know what it hit i mean we're gonna have to do that either way but it's like if we're spawning stuff, I might as well already just do projectiles. But then projectiles yeah, well, have like some complicate, some annoying stuff you have to handle. I'm like, what? Okay, yeah, whichever is fine by me. Uh, I'm gonna make this. Uh, can I make this uh, uh, platform a little bit bigger? Oh yeah, yeah. 
I didn't take into account yeah. how small it was. Now I'm just like yeah. walking on an extremely small island here. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Like change your uh, setup however you want. Make a big level of lots of stuff to do, or lots of stuff to like move around on. There we go. Here we go. I was like, damn, I didn't give myself no space. Here's the other ground right here. I'm gonna rotate it. Yeah, there we go. And you can duplicate with Control D. If you want to make more. Yeah, I gotta make more. Mine more impressive than yours. <laughs> You're the professional artist here. Yeah. It is going on Steam after today. It is. <laughs> Alright, so if we were to run it now. Okay, yeah, perfect. Yeah, now you got more stuff to do. Like, and you can try going up the slope. Yeah, yeah. Alright, perfect. Um, so, yeah, let's just do. Let's just do hit scan, because that's easier. So, what we want is we're going to create a raycast. So if we can just use a node for this, that's the easiest. So if you go under gun, yep. and hit control A, and then type in raycast, and click raycast 2D. And then this is really dumb, but for some reason it's disabled by default. So if you go over to the top right, make sure you click enabled so that it will okay. be enabled. And then you can see here there's an arrow pointing straight down. So that's um, basically, it's pointing a line straight down. Go over to cast two over here. Uh, cast right. two, right. Yeah, right. and so you can see it's pointing to Y50 relative to the player right now. So change that to be zero on the Y and let's say 50 on the X. And now you can see now it's pointing to the right. Okay, there you go. And I mean, we'd probably want it to be able to shoot pretty far, at least off screen. So if I change it to like a thousand, you can see now it's pointing off screen. The arrow would, yeah, would extend. Yeah. So basically what we can do with this is we can just reference it and it'll say whatever it's, whatever the line is touching. So if I were to go, if I go up to debug at the top left, you can do vis visible collision shapes. And then if we run the scene, you can see the line is attached to the gun, right? True, yeah, I see that. And then it'll just see basically the first shape that intersects with the line, and we can get the exact position and some in what it's intersecting with, and uh, use that to do like, um, like hit hit stuff, right? <clears throat> okay, perfect. So I'm gonna turn off the debug view here, but we want to reference to that. Well, actually, we want to make this modular. So we're going to make the gun separate. It's going to have its own code. So if you click the gun node, click the add script thing at the top. Yeah, right there. And now we're going to add a gun script. So just clear out everything in here. And then we want to get a reference to the raycast. So we'll do on ready bar raycast equals dollar sign raycast 2d dollar sign <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna have function fire so this will handle all the logic for firing the gun in here And then uh, in here we can do, um, let's see, we're going to do raycast dot is colliding, and this will be in an if statement. So first we just want to see, is the raycast colliding with anything? So it's just going to check, is the line coming out of the raycast hitting any, yeah, anything? It didn't so. show up as a, a drop down. Uh, why, is that? why are you getting weird? 
Raycast 2D relative oh, to... Oh, uh, Raycast is not capitalized. On your... Oh, sure. The R. No, no, on line three. It's gotta be... It has to have the exact same case as the node name. Okay, all right. Yeah, see. And the D needs to be capitalized also. Okay, so now... Uh, and then the... Yeah, yeah there you so go. if... Should be good. Oh, there you go. Okay, so now if we're colliding, we want to do raycast dot get collider. We'll say dot name. I think I can do that. Yeah, dot name, and we'll say we'll print that. So right now we're just gonna print the name of whatever we're pointing at, basically. Get collider. Is it not? And then still throwing errors for you. Relative. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens when it runs it. What's after name? I can't quite see. Oh, uh, parentheses. I can make this bigger. Hmm. Yeah, well, I can do that. All right, so. Something's throwing errors for you, I can't. Let me see. Maybe it's just left over. Uh, rake has to be relative. To, let's, maybe it's just a bug. All right, so now we need to get a reference to our gun script. So if we go back to our player, we can say on ready var gun equals weapon base gun, like so. Yeah, and just okay. if you click the thing, it'll auto get the case sensitive right when it does the drop yeah. down. Okay, so now um, we want to. Oh, we didn't define a fire method or input. So go up to project and then project settings, and then input map, and type in fire. And yeah, at the top. No, no, no. At the under next to action at the top left. Left right click here. that, yeah. type in fire, and then hit enter. Yeah. And then click, click plus, and then mouse button, and it should be left button by default. Mouse button? Mouse. Oh, mouse yeah. button, right. Okay. So it's left mouse button by default, and then just hit add. So now we have right. the fire method uh, defined there, and hit OK. So now what we want to do. Um, so this is not physics dependent, so I'm not going to put it in physics process. I'm going to just do process. So this gets run every frame, and we'll just do if input dot is action oops, is action just pressed fire. Then we're going to go. Oh, wait for you to write that. That's a capitalized. Yeah, input dot is action just press. You can also copy it from where you typed in jump. Uh, so fire, and then we're gonna do gun dot fire. So it's just accessing the gun node, and then it calls the fire method we defined. Oh, I put the wrong. Why are you getting so much error spam? Maybe hopefully that's just a bug. We'll see when we run the. It's it's mostly according to the gun. Uh, yeah. Gun just script. Just hit run and let's see what what happens here. Oh, it's working. Oh, but you are getting. Yeah, you're still getting some error spam. If you click, does it do anything? If you're like pointing at something and click. Oh. Oh. Here, temp it call went away. fire on null instance. Okay, so gun is null. It's unable to get. Um, what's going on? Can you? Let's see. So you're oh, getting here. no not found weapon based gun relative to root world player. Wait, huh? 
Okay, go to your player script real quick. All right. It's saying gun equals weapon base gun slash gun. Oh, uh, base is not capitalized next to weapon base on gun. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just get the right case. Now try running it, see if it works. Um, and attempt to call. Okay, Raycast. Oh, C is not capital on Raycast. There you go. Now run it. Oh. Oh, now now it gave me two more things over there. Okay. <laughs> okay, now try running it. All right. Okay, so now you see when you click, it's just saying player. That means it's colliding yeah. with the player, which we don't want. Um, so it shouldn't. Obviously, we don't want the gun to collide with itself. Um, now, if you go to the gun, or to the Raycast node here, you can see it says exclude parent, and that's checked by default, but because the player kinematic body is not the direct parent of the Raycast, that's not working. But yeah. we, can, um, we can set it to ignore um, certain bodies. Um, we like can just, the player? Yeah, we, we'll have to set it manually, though, um, through code. So. I'm going to go on the gun script and I'll add a method called function set bodies to ignore and bodies and then, yeah, like so. Bodies to ignore, yes. And then, uh, yeah, so this will be an array. So we can loop through an array um, and the way you do that would be for body in bodies, and then we can do stuff inside this loop. So the, the format for a loop, basically a loop is gonna say, so we're gonna pass in a list of bodies in case the player had more than one thing to ignore. Um, so yeah. like if you had the player and then there was like, I don't know, another physical object attached to the player that you didn't want the gun to be able to hit, you could pass that in as well. So there's a whole list of uh, kinematic bodies or something to ignore. So it's going to go take that list and then we do four body and bodies and it's going to go through every entry in that list and it'll give us a value called body for each entry and then we can do something to each one of those entries. So in this case, we're going to do raycast dot add, uh, where is it, add exception and then we add, I think it's add exception, let me check the add exception, yeah add collision, yeah okay. So add exception and we put body. And so that's gonna add a collision exception for that body. So it's not gonna count as colliding um, with that. It's not gonna think that it can collide with that. So yeah, that's what you got. You can delete line seven if you want. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, there you go. Okay, so we add the exception. Now we have to actually um, uh, pass or call this method. So we're gonna go to player um oh this this part's a little annoying so we're gonna do under ready under our ready method so this is called at the beginning of the scene here um so we're gonna do gun dot set bodies to ignore and we want to pass in ourself as a list so yeah to ignore and then Uh, and then delete everything after, yeah. So um, you're gonna put square brackets around self. So an array um, works like this. It's like if I were to do like var, I don't know, temp or something equals one, two, three, four, five, right? So this is an array of integers. So it has, it's square brackets and then there's five numbers in it, which I've set to be one, two, three, four, and five. So that means there's four things in the array. Um, if I just wanted one, I'd do like self, right? So right now, this is an array with one thing in it, or it's a list of one thing, or a list that only has one entry, and that's um, self, which is just a reference to the player itself. Um, in this case, if we wanted to pass something else in, we could pass in you know, the weapon base or something. So it's like, if for whatever reason we had collision on the weapon base, we would pass that in as well. 
to be like ignore this and ignore ourselves. But in this case, we just want to ignore ourselves, so we're gonna pass in a list with just one thing in it. Okay. I probably made that too complicated. I should have just done one collision exception, but oh well. Oh yeah, that's good. Um, I wanted to introduce loops at some point because that's an important programming thing. Okay, so we're setting it to ignore ourself, but I'm not sure this is gonna work. Let me just run this and see what happens. Did it, oh, it did work, okay, cool. So now if you point at things and click on them, it'll print the name of, yeah, the static, static body, body, right? Yeah, um, and if you wanna make it more readable, I could go to these static bodies in here and I could give it like, each one could get like a unique name, right? And then I could, um, click it and then I can see that it's pointing at different ones, right? So it's getting the one that I'm clicking at uh, or I'm aiming at when I click. But that's not very exciting. Let's like make it shoot sparks when at the point that we hit at. Yeah. So let's make some sparks. That's gonna be the main thing. So make a new scene and we'll 2D scene and we'll call it sparks and save that. So now uh, let's add a particles node, so particles 2D. Yeah, next one down, there you go. So particles 2D, and then, um, so this is what handles particles in Godot is the particles node. And it's, a, it's kind of annoying to get set up, but um, if you go over to here where it says process material, click new particles material. So that one, yeah. And then, so now you can see some uh, oh, dots yeah. falling. So if we click the actual process material here, if you click this thing, yeah, this gives us a bunch of stuff we can mess in with. So like under gravity, I do want gravity, so I'll leave that on. Direction, it's, oh wait, let's give us some initial velocity. So I'm gonna say like 50. So now you can see it's shooting to the right. Um, if I change the yeah, initial velocity, um, I want to change it to shoot, um, I guess in all directions, right? So if I go under direction, I'm going to change um, spread to be whatever the max value is. So I can just drag this to top. So that's 180. Yeah, so now it's shooting in all directions. And I want it to be kind of explosive. So if I go up under, I think it's under time at the very top, uh, the, all the way at the top. I'm right here. Oh, there's another. Yeah, yeah there's another one. So it's kind of annoying. So under here, you can mess with explosiveness. And so I'll, I'll just drag that all the way up. Oh, like yeah. a tiny bit. And then I'll also turn up the amount maybe to like 16 or something. Um, okay, so now we can this is what it's gonna look like when a bullet hits something that's gonna shoot these sparks out. So I should mess with it a little bit to make it look better, look more natural. So if I go under initial velocity, first I'll change it to have some randomness. So like, let's say, I don't know, 50% randomness. So if you go under initial velocity, there's velocity random right underneath the velocity. Yep. So the random, basically zero, zero would mean no randomness at all. Everything moves at the exact same speed. One means everything has a completely va random value from zero to whatever value we set. So some of them could have a velocity of zero. Some of them could have a velocity of 50. If I put it at 0.5, then some of them could have 25 to 50, I think. I think that's what, how it works. But um, yeah, so I'll just put like, I don't know, 0.7 or something. Um, so there's some randomness to it. I'm gonna turn up the uh, initial velocity. Um, and then also I'm gonna change the time, the lifetime at the top, because it's like sparks, it should go, I feel like it should go quicker, something like 0.4. Yeah, and then we can, let's see, we can set the color. There's like a bunch of different things you can mess with down here, so. Yeah. <clears throat> Be like, I don't know. Yeah, so you can do a color like a yellow or something, but you can also do a color ramp, which is the color over time. So if you click, 
next to color ramp. Uh, yeah, right there, click new gradient texture, and then click that, and then new gradient. And then click the gradient. And then now you can click these little bars here, and then you can change the color of it. So like I could do like that, and then I click the other one and change that to have its own color. Like, I mean, I think, wait, what? Oh, true, yeah, I see that. Yeah, and you can click inside and do like third or fourth color or something like if I wanted to. But um, and then you right click to delete it. But yeah, I don't know, pick a color that looks natural. You can also, if you change the alpha over here, you can make it fade out. Like, usually what I do is like, if I want something to fade out, I'd have it alpha of zero on the last part and then put like a third one in between or something. So it like fades out quickly right at the end. Oh yeah, okay. But yeah, I mean, this is just artistic stuff you mess around with, figure out what you like. You could also do scale. So like right here, I have the option of changing the scale of the particles and I could um, do a scale curve just like I did with the gradient. You can like add in a curve over here. So new curve, click that. And then you click that, yeah. And then you can mess with this. So like you start at zero and get bigger or start at one and get smaller. Like you can move around the points and stuff. Oh yeah. And you can add in new points. Um, so yeah, that's one thing I could change the size so you can see it better. Yeah, um, I think that's fine. I'll probably do like size of two or something. But yeah, this is fine for um, right now, I think. This is, again, something you could just mess around with artistically. Must be fine to see what it looks like if I made it really big. Yeah. Okay, so this is good. Now, um, we want to actually spawn this where wherever we hit, but we need to think about what happens when it spawns. So it's going to spawn. We just want the sparks to shoot once. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click one shot. So that means, so if you go up to the top, right? One shot right here. Yeah. So that means it'll, when you do emitting, it'll run once and then turn off. And that's it. Yeah. So that's what we want. Um, now when we actually spawn the scene, we can add in also control A and do a timer. Control A and then timer. <clears throat> and then, so with the timer selected all the way on the right, there's a wait time. So that means the timer will run for one second and then it sends out a signal at the end. And I think one second's fine, but if you want to, you could do two or three. Um, and then I'm just gonna do auto start so that means that timer will automatically start when the scene is created. And then when it's done, when the timer is done, I want it to delete this node. So I'm gonna go over to node here, this node tab, the top right. And so there's a timeout signal here. So there's a bunch of different signals on different methods. And basically the way they work is you can optionally connect to them to different functions on methods. Um, to have them, I don't know, it's just it's yeah. extra detail of things you can do. So in this case, timeout's called when it, um, or sent out when the timer reaches zero. So I can go down here and click connect. And then, uh, let's see, we wanna connect it to Sparks, but it's not letting, because there's no script on anything, it doesn't let us connect to anything. Um, so I can just click advanced here and then select the sparks node. And we're gonna have it call, um, if you type down here, receiver method, Q free. This is a method that's on every node and it basically deletes it. So, Q free, yeah. So I'll delete it at the end of the frame. And I just click connect. So now, um, once this spark scene is instance, instanced, the timer method will um, wait two seconds and then call um, delete, right? So it'll auto delete after it gets spawned. Okay. 
but we also need to actually call the particles method to like play the particles effect. So I'll just add a script to Sparks um, here and then delete all this stuff. So select Sparks, yeah. Delete everything except the ready method, or you can write the ready method out too. Okay, I see. Yeah. And then in ready, we're going to get a reference to the particles. So it'd be dollar sign particles 2D. Um, it's got to be capital, so make sure the case is right. You can just double click. Yeah, yeah there you go. And then we need to call the restart method, which basically starts, yeah, it just plays the particle effect from the beginning. And then that's all there is to this. So the sparks object is entirely self-contained and it'll play some sparks wherever it is and then delete itself. So now from the player's or from the gun's point of view, what we want to do is when we call fire is we want to place sparks wherever we hit. We want to place that sparks object. So we first need to get a reference to that object, but it's not in our scene. So the way we we just want to get a reference to it outside or like its object in the file system basically. So we can just get, uh, we'll call it sparks object equals preload um, sparks, like so. So this is getting a variable that preloads um, the sparks object um, into it. That's capital, capital yeah. spark. Um, so one cool thing you can actually do, so this is just the path to the Sparks object in the file system. What you can do is you can actually click on that object in your file system, so like bottom left, and you can just drag yeah. it, and it'll, oops, so like if you drag it to here, it'll place its path in the code editor, so you don't oh. have to actually type it out. Uh, did you, oh, you didn't capitalize it in your, so it wouldn't be capitalized for you, the S. I, I cap for this one here. Yeah, you wouldn't capitalize that S. So yeah, there you go. It's case sensitive. Um, so we have the object. So now we want to actually spawn it, which is kind of complicated to do here. So we're going to do. Uh, we need a Sparks instance. We're going to call it, and this will be Sparks object dot instance. So the Sparks object just has data about the node. It's not an actual thing in our game world. To make it a thing in the game world, you need to instance it. So we make an instance, and then we store that in a variable so we can do stuff with it. OK. And then uh, I'm just going to delete this print statement since I don't need it. Then we need to actually add it to our game world. So it's, it's in the game engine as an instance, but it's not in our actual scene. So we have to get the scene tree by doing get tree then we have to get the root of the scene tree and then we add a child to it and we we add the sparks instance <coughs> oh, that's right it showed up for me yeah there you go nice so now it's in the game world but it's not at the right position so now what we do is we need to get raycast dot get collision point. So we get the point that our raycast is colliding with, and we're going to set our sparks uh, global position to equal that. Sparks instant global position. There you go. And then big cast. Like that, right? Yeah, that looks good. So now we can run this. And if you click, you'll see wherever you oh, shoot, yeah. there you go. It's spawning sparks there. So yeah, there we go. Ultra, ultra basic, you know, first steps of a platformer shooter. All right, so tell me everything that confuses you about 
um, what we've done so far. With I this think it, it's less confusing and more un having to understand the language, like just like knowing it, there is nothing confusion or confusing about this. It's more of a matter of, of getting used to the definition of everything and mm -hmm. what everything means and, 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 and how does it function and, you know, react and all this other stuff with language. It's, it's, and it's just a matter of really more, more of time and, and yeah. doing it time and time and time again in order to, okay, like now, you know, it's like mm -hmm. eventually you look at the, at the dropping green text in the matrix and it'll make sense. Like, yeah. it's kind of like you just have to kind of, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely. It's really straightforward, obviously, all things considered. Yeah, I think it's just, I mean, it's, yeah, you just have to do it, like, on a regular basis every day. Do, yeah, do you have plans absolutely. to try that? or? Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the first step of, of it is understanding the UI and then, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, reading more into these. The, the, obviously, every engine has functions differently according to its own language, so... Um, this is obviously such a huge step in, in, into into being comfortable in, uh, uh, with the engine. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I, I don't see I don't see why it would end now. I cool. I okay. Totally, I totally love I totally love to dig in deeper and, and figure it out on my own and and, and you know yeah. obviously it's become so um, approachable now with all these all different engines like Unity and all this other stuff and, and, and mm -hmm. all these like new devs coming in and creating something new out of it like damn like why not you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. like it's, it's not gonna hurt mm -hmm. just a matter of getting your foot in I think that's like what a lot of people are really scared of is like is yeah. like how do you even start I think that's the question you ask yeah but, that is um, yeah but this is this is really great stuff yeah, because I, I think a big problem a lot with tutorials is like they're made by people like me who have been like making games for eight years and it's like at that point you kind of forget what it's like to be a beginner and you forget like how do you yeah. even teach a beginner because you're just recording it but you're not actually talking to someone. So it's like that's why I kind of wanted to do something like this with someone who's a beginner who's like because then I can talk to you while you're doing it and I can see yeah. exactly what you struggle with and where the problem area is and then like other beginners can see it and be like oh I can actually follow along. And yeah, like, exactly. You know. And generally speaking, like when you explain something, when somebody, anybody explains something, they explain it in a way that they understand it. Yeah. Right? So what they'll be like, okay, this, you know, like all of these different instances yeah. within the code, like make sense to me because this is the way I know and how I explain them. But obviously, for someone who has like no idea, right? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 they're like, wait, so what? What does that mean again? But I mean, yeah. honestly, like with the. Uh, with the capability of just simply clicking on a uh, on a, on on any part of the body of the of the code, and then having the explanation by like when you control click something, for example, yeah. and you have that almost like like encyclopedia of how the the, the stuff works, you know, and yeah. it, it, it's almost like you didn't have that like ten years ago, no, you know, you didn't. or whatever, <laughs> so, like. Like there was like no like it was trial by fire so it was like yeah like there's there's a lot to learn but it's not daunting it's not intimidating it's, mm -hmm. it's really straightforward it looks it looks fun more fun than uh, than than intimidating by now cool okay um, let's see do you want to add some graphics and then we can call it there oh yeah why not I think that, okay. that I think I think that's probably something I'd I'd be able to be a, Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So we can find some free graphics online. I I typically either use itch.io or Open Game Art for graphics. Um, I was just gonna like browse through free stuff. So if you go on, yeah. I just put some Doom textures on it. No, I'm kidding. You got it? I don't. Is that legal? I guess. <laughs> I don't modded. think so. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, so. Itch.io, right? Yeah, itch.io slash game assets. You can also just go and click the assets tab. Oh, there we go. I see it. Yeah, and then there's also opengameart.org, which has a bunch of free assets as well. Um, it's always good to check the licenses too on what you can do with stuff. So I'm wondering if there is just a 
straight up platformer shooter or something. I know Kenny has platformer shooter stuff. Um, Wait, this is my. This is. Let me look for you. Let me look for your. Is there anything for? Oh, these are projects. chat knows a good platformer shooter um, art collection asset collection send a link yeah give it give it to us yeah, yeah. Free. trying to make a game here what's a good oh there's one I used for like a jam ages ago but it was like I don't know it was like a real pain to set up it was it was some game that went in the public domain like in 1998 oh okay wow. <laughs> Create our own and paint, somebody said. Oh wait, what's this? Oh, that's that's top down. Yeah. Um hmm. it's like an RPG. There was like there was some like first person shooter. There's like some FPS graphics on that one though. I was like a double which... barrel shotgun on that one, on the one that you said that was top down. Oh on the, wait, wait. Right, look on the on the bottom, or just under that one. There's like a shotgun and stuff. Uh, a second picture from, on the second row. Oh yeah, <laughs> there are. Yeah, right there. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's like a gallery shooter. Yeah, I was thinking that's the word. Oh, somebody said search sci-fi and set pixel art filter. I don't know how to search this. Oh yeah, the game was called Abuse. The one that went public to me. Oh, true. I don't even know how to search on here. Yeah, so, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's quite. Uh... <laughs> it doesn't let you search for these. Yeah. Oh, pixel art here. Okay, pixel art sci-fi it's not appending my tags pixel art and sci-fi here we are oh this looks good okay here's a tile set we can use so there's a shotgunner and a character oh wow there's a lot of character packs yeah okay fully animated yeah i'll download wow. this uh, and should I send you the link? Uh, no, I got it. Okay. All right. Let me know when you got it. Uh, set up and we can go through the assets okay so yeah here we have the tile set or the character sheets oh, there's a bunch of different ones okay yeah we can set up these animations pretty easily where is the tile set though I thought it said there was a tile set in here asset pack page pack includes dark tile set four fully animated enemies. I don't see any of those things in here. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Maybe I'm just supposed to down, no, it's not that. Yeah, it just gave me the, this guy. Oh, that's annoying. False advertising. Oh, maybe it's that second one, no. Nope. It's weird. Oh, you have to pay five dollars or more for the dark edition. Wait. 
Okay, I guess you have to pay for that one. Yeah, okay, so the, the character is free. The... Yeah, the character is oh, free. That. I just need a tile set also. So we could do... Yeah, we can go for this industrial tile set also. I don't know what the resolution difference is going to be, but probably not that bad. They both look pretty blocky. So if you get this industrial tile set here... Yep. Um, yeah, let's just use that one actually, because that has a character in it too. Uh, so yeah, just download that. Uh, version 2, sure. Okay, and that's just a flat image, so that's pretty easy to work with. Um, okay. Uh, whoops. So you can, let's see, take the image and just drag and drop it into Godot. I should probably have a separate folder for this actually. I'm gonna, so you can just right click anywhere in here and do new folder. I'll just make one called graphics or something. And I'll just drag in the image. And then, yeah, so we got the sprite here. Let's see, we start with the character, I guess. And then, so for a character, you can use Control A. I'll do add in an animated sprite node on the player. Which one? Which graphics are we using for the character? So we'll use. So that's a whole sprite sheet. It has all the sprites. So we can just select the stuff we want off of it. Okay. Um, so if you select your player node, you can go add an animated sprite node. I'm not sure if it's going to work. I don't know if this sprite sheet is like aligned properly for this. But yeah, you add in, oh, did you add an animated sprite? To the player node? Yeah. Yep. There you go. So then over here, go to frames, and you can do new sprite frames. And then click that once you add it. Yep. Uh, so it should make, uh, if you click this, it makes a pop-up down here. Okay. So this is all our animations on the left. So there's a default blank one. Um, I'll call this run. And so this is going to be our run animation. So we need to add in our stuff. So we click this button here, add frames from a sprite sheet. Then we can go to our graphics and go to double click the image. And now you can see that it's, uh, yeah, double click that. You can see it's got four giant blocks, or it's four by four, I mean. Um, which is not the size of the sheet. So we can just increase these until it aligns properly to the character. I don't know what the character's at. I wish I could zoom in on this. Okay, I think it might be 32. Not sure. I think I just... Oh, wait. I got a vertical yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 32 by 32. And then you can... Um, let's see. Huh? You can click on the grid. I think you can click on the grid. Yeah, so you can click and select all these nodes here. It's really annoying you can't zoom in on this, but so yeah, we can just select those ones, and that'll be the run animation. So click add eight frames. When you're done with that. Oh, also, if you zoom in, you can see it's really blurry. Um, what you can do to fix that is you double click the, or just click on the image here. Oh, it, did, it looks like you didn't add them. But here, yeah, just click on this image right here real quick. Okay. And then go up to import at the top, top left. Where, where do you have? Okay, right there. Yeah, and then, um, where is it? Click preset up here. Uh, yeah, and then do 2D pixel. And then click re-import, and that turns off. That'll make it so it's not blurry. You'll get nice crispy pixels. But um, go back to your animated sprite node, click the import from sprite sheet, add frames from a sprite sheet at the bottom. You already have it. Yeah, yeah, there. Right here. Okay. Uh, and then what do I click? Right here. Yeah. Add frames, sprite sheet, and then choose the image. Open it. And I know you were there. Yeah. Yeah. That. Open that. So double click or click open and then select the eight run animation nodes. 
Yeah, and then click add eight frames. Okay. There you go. And now you can hit play. Where's the play button? I think it's, no, it's not that one. Oh, here it is, playing. So you would click this up here. On the right where it says playing, you would check that. All the way on the top right. Yeah, right there. Oh, there we go. And you can change the speed down here. So like right now it's at five FPS. I could turn it up to 15. That looks a lot nicer. Uh, at the bottom left. There we go, perfect. I'm kidding. Oh wait, what's that? Oh, speed scale. Oh, yeah, you can turn that up too. But at the very bottom left, it shows the FPS. At the bottom left? Bottom left, very bottom, where your uh, sprites are. Yeah. Okay. So you could, I set that to 15 FPS on mine. And your speed scales too. You could just hit the arrow to reset it. Yeah. And also, that's if you don't want it to loop, you can, uh, you know, uncheck that and it won't loop. Uh, let's make another animation. So we're going to do new animation. So you just click this thing here. Yep. And then we'll call this one jump, I guess. I think there was a jump animation in that sprite sheet. Can't really tell. Um. Oh, it looks like there's a land animation. I think that's when you like hit the ground. But we can just take one frame from that. So if you do the import from sprite sheet button, then choose that. And then choose like this frame. That'll be our jump animation. Yeah, just that one frame. We also want an idle, so I'll add one more. Call it idle. And then we do add from sprite sheet again. So yeah, call it idle. Yeah, and then I'm not it's sure. that whole top. It's that almost whole top air, uh, row, isn't it? It looks like he's like bouncing. I think that might be. A, I'm not sure. Yeah, we could try just selecting that whole top row. I think that might be a land animation, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like a squash, like when you hit the ground or something. Oh, if true. I, yeah. Yeah, but we can just take a couple of these frames, so like I could um, maybe like one, two, and three, so I'll like remove, whoops, that, oh, it's annoying that it goes back to the start every time. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Maybe just like two of them. It looks like the eyes move, so I'm trying to figure out what's like a. <laughs> These all look kind of weird. Maybe yeah. if I just took. Oh, we could just use a static one like this for idle. Or. I mean, I'm wondering if. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there wasn't an idle animation in this thing. Yeah, well, I mean, you, just, could just, you could just do zero and one, and then just bring the FPS down to like maybe like one or two. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I like and that. then he just, he just looks like he's kind of like bouncing up and down. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I like five FPS or so. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. And we got jump. We got run. Wait, why is it? Oh, here. You can change what animation is playing at the top right where it shows the animation. Um, okay, so that that's good. Now we need to actually play those animations based on what we're doing. Oh, also we need to actually make this sprite uh, match our player's collider. So I'll move it up a bit and then I'll also transform the scale it by like double maybe even triple actually yeah I'll move it to like there actually maybe I should have maybe I should scale everything else around this I don't know we can 
figure it out later. But for now, yeah, I'm just scaling that up three times so it matches the... Oh, it looks like the bottom of your collider is not at zero also. You might want to move that and the player sprite. So everything's at zero. Like how Where? What? what do I fix? So you would move your collider, your collision shape Yeah. is like a bit high. So move it to the bottom of it. Is that exactly at X there at the red line? Do I do the same with the character? Like not the sprite, but uh, the... Uh... Yeah, yeah, the collision shape and the sprite. The yeah, shape, you would want okay. them all to be have the bottom at zero. about making everything like snap and align correctly but we can delete this sprite now that we put in as placeholder just the uh the main sprite yeah yeah there you go and would we hit, would we have to bring the gun down a little bit considering how yeah you could bring it oh. down just move the weapon base down to where the character's hands are and then also Maybe put the animated sprite at the top of the hierarchy so everything else shows in front of it. It'll make it easier to tell where your collision is and stuff. Yeah, and you'd also want the gun to show over. Oh yeah, so your capsule shape there, move that down so the bottom of it is at zero. Your collision shape, yeah, that. Move that down so the bottom touches, yeah. There you go. There you go. Okay, so now um, we need to make it so it actually plays the animations. So if we go into our player script, we can get a reference to uh, animated sprite. Like so. So dollar sign, and then yeah, have it auto-complete. So you hit enter there. So that, and then I'll get the case sensitive, right? Um, yeah. So now in here, we need to play our animations based on what's going on, right? So if we're moving and we're on the ground, then we need to do one thing. Let's just do, I'll make a method for it. Function update animation, we'll call it, right? Uh, so that would be outside. You want it below where you call point weapon at mouse because you don't okay. want it to be inside the code for process, physics process. And then unindented by one line. Yeah, there you go. So that means separate method or separate function. So in here, in update animation, what we want to do is first we want to see if we're on the ground. So is on four. And if we're on the ground, and uh, let's see, we want to see if our velocity, if our horizontal velocity is you know, greater than a certain amount, then we want to play the run animation, otherwise we play the walk animation. So we can do um, if the absolute value of velocity.x, so absolute value just means um, if it's a negative number, it makes it positive. So we're going to just see if that is less than, we'll say, 0 0.1, so it's less than a very low amount, then um, then we will we'll do animated sprite. I think it's play uh, run, no, idle. Oh, uh, indent lines 41 and 42. Since they're inside the, or no, no, don't unindent. Indent, yeah. Indent line 41 one more time also. Yeah, so it's inside the is on floor statement. So this if statement is only called if is on floor is called. Okay. And then inside of that, you do animated sprite. Play idle. So now it'll play the idle animation as long as, yeah, 
or we're moving less than a certain amount. Um, and then else, so if um, our velocity is greater than 0 0.01, we're gonna play animated sprite dot play uh, run. So unindent else a bit, because you don't want it to be inside this if statement. Whenever you do an else, it has to be on the same line as the if that came All before right. it. And then you got to unindent line 44. Somebody's making fun of me for how easy it is to teach indentation. <laughs> um, and then, okay, and then corresponding to this if, we're going to do an else. So if we're not on the floor, we're going to do animated sprite play jump. Uh, oh, so you'll have to unindent 45 and 46, because that's got to correspond to our first if. We're, we're checking if we're on the floor. So if we're on the floor, we do the stuff where we check to see if we're going to play idle or run. If we're not on the okay. floor, we do the stuff to play jump. Oh, true, true. Oh, I'd already finished it. Uh, oh, you misspelled play. Oh, misspelled play. Yeah. And then unindent that line also. There we go. Okay, um, and then we just have to call update animation in our main process method. Um, we could call that. I guess we'll call it in physics process. It doesn't matter. So just yeah, put it after that. There you go. Now let's see. If I run this, is it going to work great? Okay, it is. Cool. So you can see your character animates. The only problem is it's not facing the direction of travel. So yeah. we'll have to make it flip. Um, so to make it flip, let's see. Uh, we can do we can put this in update animation. So how are we gonna do this? Uh, I think under animated sprite, yeah, there's a flip horizontal value on the animated sprite node that flips it to face left or right. So all we have to do is have that be true based on the uh, sign if velocity x is positive or negative. So we can just do, uh, let's see, velocity dot x um, greater than zero. So if velocity, so if this is, if velocity dot x is greater than zero, this will evaluate to true, otherwise it will evaluate to false. So, Actually, I think I want to do less than, and then we can do animated sprite dot flip horizontal equals that. So the flip horizontal value, if it's true, it's going to flip to face um, left. If it's false, okay. then it'll keep it facing to the right. So all we need to do is check if our velocity um, dot x is less than zero, so that means it's negative, then that's true. It should flip to the left. Um, yeah, and I think otherwise it'll keep it facing to the right. I think that could work. Um, that might. Oh, the problem is when we stand still now, it automatically switches back to the right. There you go. Yeah, but if you were to stop moving, it keeps facing to the right, no matter yeah. what. Which. So, I guess you'd have so we can add a little more code for that. So we'll do. I'll add a variable called facing right and set it to be true. So that's going to keep track of what direction we're facing. So facing right is true. And I'll just check. Um, yeah, bar facing right. So at the start, we are facing the right. And then what we do is if we're facing to the right and our velocity dot x is less than zero, meaning we're moving left, then we want to set animated sprite to be flipped. Um, yeah, true. We set flip h to true. So it's going to flip 
face the other direction. Oh, and we want to set facing right to equal false. So yeah, we're facing to the right, but we're moving to the left. Flip it and say that we're not facing the right anymore. And then, um, yeah, facing right equals false. And then I copy that. Do you understand the logic of this? Of how it like governs if, that part? Oh, um, yeah, that, you're just simply telling it like it, the, accordingly to where you're facing. Yeah. If you're if, if you're facing this way, then then sprite uh, is the flip the sprite within. Yeah. Right and left. Yeah. Um, oh, that should all be in the update animation function. So the the if and then everything below that. Yeah, every uh, 41 to 43, those lines. Copy that and put it under update animation. Oh. And then delete line 46, because that's no longer needed. And then you can copy these three lines here, paste it, and we're just gonna do the reverse. Okay. So basically, if velocity x is greater than zero, and if we're facing to the left. So the way to check if something is not true is you put an exclamation sign. So basically, if we're not facing to the right, so you put exclamation mark. Exclamation mark. So if we're not facing the right, but we're moving to the right, set the flip to be false and set facing right to be true. We're just gonna flip them basically. Yeah, we just flip everything over. And that should be right. So if you run it now, it should match. And if you like stop moving. Yeah, perfect. Nice. And now let's let's change the gun graphic also. So if you go under gun to sprite, we can uh, drag our uh, tile set onto the texture there. Drag that up to, yeah, top right, yeah, under texture there. And then reset the transform, or the scale to be zero, under transform. Okay, under transform. Yeah. Set that to be zero. Just click the arrow, and it'll reset it. Or I mean to one, it'll set it to one. Uh, yeah, just click that, there you go. So now we need to actually select, oh, and under modulate, hit the arrow so it goes back to its default color. Yeah. Um, so now we need to actually select what part of the sprite sheet we want to use. So go under region at the top right. You can click region or drop down that and then click enabled. And then at the bottom, very bottom of your screen, there's now a texture region option. Yep. And then you can go to snap mode, choose pixel. And then you go to you can just like zoom in over to here. You can drag this to make it bigger. Go down to this gun and we can just like select part of this gun or something like, uh, like I'll select this part or something. There's a, that looks like a turret or a camera. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's a gun turret, I think. But I can just select um, like the top part here. Yeah. And then now we have yeah, our turret over here. Of course, it's not scaled up to match the player sprite. I think I'm going to scale the player sprite down so that it has the right as the same resolution as everything else, so we don't have to scale stuff. So if I just go back to my animated sprite, I'm going to animated sprite and then reset the scale on the right side down under node 2D under scale. Reset under that. scale? Where is it? Yeah, oh. reset. It was right under where you were, under position. Yeah. Okay, right here. Yeah. yeah. So then uh, you can just move the animated sprite down, move the weapon base down to be on the new position. I'll move the gun sprite over. I don't know, somewhere like that. Um, and then I'm going to change the size of the collision shape to match the new size of the player. We're 
change the, uh, the raycast? Uh, you don't need to move the raycast, just move the, the gun node, or the weapon base node. Yeah. Yeah, and then move the gun sprite to whatever position you want it to be. Yeah. And then change the collision shape. Don't scale it. It's it's good not to scale collision. I don't know. I've always heard you shouldn't scale them, but like I've done it without problems. But I think it's better to work with the bounds like that. Yeah, with the just grab those points and move them. Just grab these. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, make it match the player about. The problem now, of course, is that the player is going to be super tiny on the camera. Yeah. So you can select the camera on the top left, camera 2D. Yeah. And then you go to zoom, and uh, we can change the zoom level. I think it's, yeah, so if you change it smaller, so like 0.5 and then 0.5, it'll half the size of the camera area. Now if I were to run the scene, you can see a lot more zoomed in, and the character is a lot smaller compared to everything else. Oh yeah. And you can see the gun sprite matches. That's excellent. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then we can just to end, we can do the tile map, so you can like place tiles and stuff. So we can go to our world. And let's just delete all of these ground nodes we made. So if you go to our, your world scene, yep. just delete all of these. The ground nodes? Yeah. Just, ground one, and two, and three? Yeah, just delete all of them. And then add in a new node, search tile map. So control A and then tile map. So now uh, we can create a tile set. So if you click over here, on the very right there's a board that says tile set. Yeah, on empty. Yeah, and then click new tile set. And then click that tile set spot we just made. There's currently no tiles defined, so we need to define something. So then you can drag on the sprite sheet into this area here at the bottom left uh, into this part right here yeah um, so we want to do a new tile so I'll click I think it's it doesn't let me set the snap options until I like where is it let me do this I forget how to do this it's like kind of like a bit broken think they're like updating it in the new version but right now I can just select new single tile and I think I can just drag an area and I'm gonna get I'll just select this one for now um, what's the size on this oh oh that's what I wanted oh okay hang on yeah so you click yeah, once you do that, you can click uh, that area, and it'll give you snap options. Okay. Um, why is it? Okay. And I can do snap options over here. Once you click on... You have to, like, actually click within the grid, and then it'll give you snap options. So just click somewhere in the grid there. Yeah, and then over on snap options, now it gives you step. Set that to 16, because that's... This is a 16 okay. by 16. Yeah. And then now we can uh, go over here. Uh, I'm just going to delete this one. We can select. I'm going to use. Yeah, I'll just use this. This spot right here as my tile. And then I'll go to. So I just want to select one. So I just click that. And then I go to collision over here and click the box. We're going to give it a box collision shape. So this box here, and then we give it, and then you click on the node itself, or on the tile, I mean, that we on just, yeah. 
and then that gives us a collision shape. Now you can click back on the tile map uh, right up here. And then, and then one more thing, click cell over here, right here, click this. All right. Yeah, and then under size, set it to be 16 by 16. And then now, at last, we can draw tiles. Okay, perfect. And you can draw out everything, and if you hold shift, it'll draw tiles in a line. Um, you can hold shift and control, it'll draw them in a square. You right click, it'll delete. Shift, right click, delete in a line, control shift, delete in a square. And yeah, you can draw out whatever shape level you want. And of course, you can make more tiles um, by going back to the tile set and clicking new single tile, doing the same thing. So yeah, you can draw this out however you want. And then you can run the scene and actually test it. And you'll see that it collides. Right click remove the tile. Yeah. Alright, hold on, I'm level designing here. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Is there a way so like the space is uh, the jump is interrupted if he hits his head on the platform because he gets stuck right under the platform? Oh yeah. When you jump right under it. Yeah, there is. So here's what we can do. If you go back to script on the player, yeah, go to the player script. Yeah, you were there. Um, here, let me bring this back down. So uh, where is it? Move and slide. Move and slide actually returns the velocity you would get after you hit something. So in this case, all we need to do is we just say velocity equals that. We just put this before the move and slide. And then so if we jump up and hit the ceiling, it'll be like, oh, we hit a ceiling. Your velocity on the Y should be zero now. So it returns what your velocity should be. And then you can, so if you actually set your velocity to equal that, now it'll be like physically accurate. So if I go here and I fall back down, and there's oh, yeah. like there there's go. tons of tricks you can do to make jumping better like we can make so you know you jump higher if you hold down the jump button longer you can make yeah. so you know coyote time if you hit jump half a second off after you step off a ledge you can still jump um there's like yeah it's like a ridiculous amount of stuff you can do to make jumping feel better in a platformer oh for sure yeah that's great oh yeah i didn't even add horizontal acceleration could have done that, but my voice is getting all the time. <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. Okay, so yeah, um, let's see. You can find some tutorials and stuff. Yeah, just look up like Godot tutorials, beginner stuff, and just like, yeah. I don't know, watch like one or two a day and follow through on them. Oh yeah, And then for sure. eventually, yeah, after like a month or two, you should be ready to like make stuff on your own without using tutorials. No, yeah, maybe we could cool. we could do like a, a check in stream in like a month, where we go over more stuff or something. You can like oh, show yeah. what you've done. No, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, this is cool. I think this is this is gonna be like my. I'm gonna like save the archive of this, yeah. and it'll be like my go to like anyone who's a beginner is like, how do I get started? Here, watch this. Yeah, perfect. It's like, yeah. All right. We all. Yeah. Uh, do you have any questions about anything? Uh, not that I can think of. Uh, I think this is like a, a pretty good uh, introduction to it. Uh, not that I can think of right now, no. Okay. I think that overall, like, I think that the the texture, the the texture, the the way that the that Godot goes around with the textures and stuff is like pretty straightforward. Like okay. it, it almost seemed like almost familiar because you know, like it's almost like like uniform in some sense. But mm -hmm. I think it all just comes down to getting used to the language. I think that's just one hundred percent what it is, or what uh, what is the most uh, practice that you need to get into do. Yeah. The, uh, language. Yeah, that and, makes uh, sense. 
but no, that all things considered, it's pretty straightforward. Cool. By the way, how did you start doing memes and stuff? How did you like become, you know, a famous? I think what, it was, I think what it was is was initially like when it comes to like games, they all have that go-to um, like phrasing and stuff, and just overall memes. Like if we were to look at like Deus Ex for example, like Deus Ex was like heavily, like the community mostly like repeated the same joke or two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was like oh, what a shame or, or it's a bomb, and it was like that for like. <laughs> ages and so i had found like a deus ex group like a private group that i had joined in and then um i was like what if i just like not do that <laughs> like what if i just start making like like jc do like absurd shit like where it's just like them in like a sitcom kind of like setting where like they're pranking manderly or they're like or or he's like saying something stupid and extremely out of norm and it's like and it was like that kind of like creative process of like coming up with all sorts of like absurd like um things for characters and extremely out of character like obviously like the stuff that has kind of become more popularized is this like himbo duke like saying really dumb things oh yeah like, <laughs> like um obviously it's the anti-thesis of the character like he wouldn't actually do that and that's what makes it funny like if <laughs> yeah. if, 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 if like a lot of people think that like it a lot of people would be scared if i were to like to be creative director of a duke nukem game but it's like that's 100 <laughs> that's 100 i would not do those things you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> like like that, that last one that gianni posted like obviously his voice uh, the voice work he did for that one is uh a, a, a great example of that um but no it was like it was like get out of the get out of the bubble of like of like balls of steel and all that and then just <laughs> like come up with something absolutely absurd and batshit insane and like that's kind of like the the therapeutic process of like being um of of making stuff is not so much like it's kind of like um yeah it, it's just like kind of like a creative process like that's the appeal of it it's like just just doing it for fun yeah like coming up with jokes and and putting characters in really dumb situations <laughs> yeah but yeah it's it's it, it that that's kind of like what it ended up coming down to it was like it was it was just kind of doing it for fun and it it caught on fire really quickly i think what happened was like when i was making like deus ex memes back in the day with that private group it had gotten to people like dust dev who were who were like uh, sharing it on Twitter when I wasn't on Twitter oh. and then I was like and I was like wait if these guys want my memes on Twitter Leon Sawada who is the developer for Amid Evil mm -hmm. uh, he was like hey why don't you like upload them on Twitter because Facebook is kind of dumb with the storage yeah. of like all this stuff and it's like why don't you just put them on Twitter and I was like alright sure so then I started and then like like whoa like shit just fucking caught on fire like really quickly mm -hmm. and and so now we have a really good ecosystem of like voice actors like voicing this the stuff i make and then mm -hmm. like and then obviously collaborations and then uh, you know like a lot of youtube a lot of youtube personalities that knew uh, that um that i've watched ended up coming up to me and asking me for to do work for them and all this other oh, stuff nice. and wait like, you, a, like what kind of work like a lord uh mandalore some of my stuff is on his uh oh sick on, a, on his uh, Warhammer 2 review, mm -hmm. so it's like it's Balthazar Gelt, like wearing, uh, like, like saying, uh, I can't remember. It was like it, it's just graphics of him. Like Balthazar Gelt is like obsessed with gold that that character is. Mm -hmm. So he's just kind of like drinking lean and wearing like designer clothes and you know like all this other stuff. Like be living like a like a bougie life kind of deal. So he wanted to add those graphics into his into his uh, video which obviously uh when he got to Balthasar Gelt it was that obsession with gold and money so it was like yeah. coming up with the idea of uh of of how Balthasar Gelt would would live within a current time like would he wear designer clothes uh -huh. and stuff and <laughs> assert, assert shit like that you know what I mean yeah so, so there was other stuff like uh, G-Man obviously uh, lives uh, had asked me for some thumbnail work and then um, 
obviously Realm Steep is this weekend, and Realm Steep is like the um, it's kind of like the boomer shooter. Uh, Wait, Realm Steep. Uh, realms. Oh, Realm Steep. Yeah, right now there's a Steam sale with all the games that are per, that are presented on that um, on that uh, live live event. So this is like a uh, this is like a boomer shooter kind of like like expo, like online mm -hmm. expo where like they're gonna announce all sorts of new stuff. Obviously from New Blood and 3D Realms. 3D Realms like, hosting it with Night and a uh, Night Dive is in it as well. There's some merchant things. So um, yeah, so I had done work for the first. The very first realm steep which was a bunch of like little uh transition videos before the team respect who that are respecting too so like mm -hmm. i mean one for running with scissors and then 3d realms and night dive and stuff like that so it was it was like really great to sort of work with not only like 3d realms like whoa like you know like big deal so yeah yeah it, it was it but i think i've known these guys for quite a long time now especially like at Dave Oshry and all these other people that I that yeah, yeah. have known them for for years. Oh, cool! But yeah, that, did you just meet them right. on forums and stuff, or uh, I like I I made them like Are you talking about the transition videos? Or no, because you know oh, I meet them on oh, no I had done I had done QA for uh, Rise of the Triad twenty thirteen. Oh. Whoa! So you so, worked as a playtester and stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cause... Oh, that was that was that was a uh, that was ancient history. Yeah. Wait. That was a long time ago. Are you still working in games, or are you? No, not not right now. Okay. That, that was just a bit of a uh, that was a, just a bit of a opportunity that was given to me by Frederick Shriver, who knew I was like a huge, you know, Duke fan and all this yeah. other stuff. And then he had I had ended up following him because a long time ago, a lot of people may not have remembered, but. They were cons and back when back then they were known as Interceptor. They were considering working on a Duke 3D Reloaded, which was a like uh, like a, a remake of Duke 3D. When mm -hmm. it was going to be a fan project, and unfortunately that was canceled. So they ended up picking up Rise of the Triad instead. And then I think Fred was following me during a time when they were making Duke 3D Reloaded, and when they, I think when they brought up rise of the triad i think he was like he brought me in he asked me to come in work yeah and help them out with that oh nice do you think you'll be able to like fully monetize ever like what you're currently doing uh, uh probably at some point i think i have thought about it and a lot of people have asked me about it um it's just a matter of how do you go about it right because obviously well, like when you talk about like when you do when what like for yourself for example you have your content relatively um and uh, concrete right like you can do dev videos or you could like yeah. show your or you could do like videos about your your games and blah 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 obviously mm -hmm. my content is a lot less tangible like yeah. i am making i'm just shit posting on the internet like how do you monetize that yeah like, yeah like and i was doing videos at one point but obviously now you're dealing with ndmca laws and stuff like yeah, this yeah now now it's a little trickier there so it's just a matter of how do you go about it people have said patreon and stuff and obviously that's a possibility yeah. but as of right now it's just for fun it's yeah for and with patreon it's hard to like i mean from what i've seen people don't really give that much unless they're getting something very tangible in return like like exactly. i have patreon and not many people sign up until i was like hey i'm working on this game and if you back yeah. me you can play the demos and then it's like suddenly yeah. tons of people and so and it's I don't like, want to. Yeah. I don't want to lock the trans. That I make a lot of like PNG uh, transparency of, I think you like you right there. I've, mm -hmm. I've rendered that Duke model and I yeah. gave up that PNG version. I don't want to put those and lock those behind a paywall. Yeah. I would just put them for free for everyone to use. Um, and so yeah, that was, one hundred percent like. The, uh, that's why you know it's kind of tricky to think about it. Uh, how do you go about it? But. Uh, that's pretty much it yeah hmm well yeah if you get into making games you could you know yeah, sell that for go, sure right? <laughs> yeah i'm gonna start making games and uh put this one up on steam no i'm kidding yeah and, uh, i mean <laughs> legally you could yeah you know right but yeah no i definitely gonna save this because obviously there's a lot to look into or i'm sorry save the uh, uh 
what we've made so far with Godot, because obviously yeah. there is, with the script and all this stuff, there's a good deal. I like, oh, well, with the Red Bubble, obviously, I've been making like some shirt designs, and the one with the Silent mm -hmm. Hill Seinfeld thing took off quite a bit, so that one's doing well. But, um, but no, yeah, with this uh, with this game we just made, like clearly all that script is obviously like a really useful, uh, um, what's it called, uh, resource to look into yeah. and see what and, and play around with it, obviously. And you could also maybe do like visual novels and stuff because there's a lot of engines that are very easy to use. Like for yeah, yeah, RPG Maker yeah. too is also like, and because you have a lot of, you're good at making graphics and you're good at like writing jokes and stuff. So it's yeah. like that's something you could very easily and i wonder you have all these connections with these boomer shooter people i wonder what if i wonder if they would let you make like a visual novel set in one of their games <laughs> yeah that, 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 would, that would doom them no i'm kidding i think that would yeah that, that i mean it's a possibility right and they have a lot of really talented ar artists like and and uh, i mean as a writer and all that stuff like it could work right mm -hmm. but uh yeah of course right now I mean, you said it yourself. Like they're they're a bit of a, a retro shooter uh, community, so I don't think they're about to make. They always joke around saying a visual novel for this and that, but yeah, yeah. I, I think for them, they consider it more of a meme. But I mean, I know how popular visual novels novels are, especially mm -hmm. how it's it's actually kind of crazy. And especially back in the day when you used to play them on a fla on the on Flash, mm -hmm. uh, everybody loved those. But uh, yeah, it's it, no, that's a it, there's never uh, never say never to a possibility like that. Yeah. Hmm. But it, there's all sorts of uh, opportunities. Yeah, dang, that's cool. I want to like see you make more stuff and like oh, yeah. <laughs> achieve success and do this full time. Oh, no, without cool. a doubt. Yeah. I wonder if you have you tried streaming? I wonder if you'd be good. Streaming is streaming is something that has been in my brain like every almost like every day, and it, it's something that I'm obviously like very interested in. Yeah. Um, the time for it right now is a little in the place that I'm at right now. It's obviously yeah. like, you know, the, you you got to be taken into accountability like where you are, like how much time you have, and then like mm -hmm. the setup for it. So there, I'm kind of, I. I have to get some of that stuff sorted out before I I, I, I can stream and set yeah, all that sense. stuff up. And then once, like, like obviously, uh, you work on your, your graphics for your stream, so you have, like, you know, like, dumb little things playing around whenever someone donates to you or whatever, uh, yeah. right? So there's all that. Yeah, I mean, if you just streamed playing these shooters, I feel like that would get a big yeah, I audience. Know, right? Yeah, that's that's yeah for sure. Like even just like playing new shooters or playing old shooters, like like I, there's I had streamed in the past, but it was like super bare bone. Just like I'll go on Twitch with OBS and like play Devil Daggers and see how far mm -hmm. I can get on Devil Daggers. Like uh, you know, like a shooter like that, like a yeah, like a high score shooter and things but uh no i mean well damn that that obviously that that industry has obviously gotten uh very ludicrous and, and yeah there's all sorts of money and, and obviously there's a great community in the streaming community you can eventually you know have and i've seen some of these smaller um streamers that who just who do well just kind of like having a small community and just like doing a stream Fridays and on the weekends and all this other stuff. So there's a, there's a huge uh, interest in it, but mm -hmm. obviously real life, the IRL is uh, is is something that to take into accountability too before you you head into this direction. Yeah. But yeah, like uh, like I said, like obviously with the shit, shit posting, it's it's kind of like it's too inse too insecure, I guess. Like it's mm -hmm. too there isn't security there, so to speak. That. Like, you know, I can't be like, oh, I need money. I know, I'll just make a joke right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Like, uh, you have to uh, think of some alternatives. I think, like, with Twitch, you could end up, like, you know, connecting it with YouTube and then having your, your like you said, like, you were going to back, uh, you were going to save the stream and then put it on YouTube or who, wherever. Mm -hmm. um, and so that works out, too, right? Yeah, yeah. So that, you can monetize that. 
Oh just yeah, they might be monetized with Twitch. You have a lot of connections with people. They'd probably be down to be interviewed. You could just interview them on stream and then put them on, you know. Yeah, exactly. On Twitch, yeah. that's another thing. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole. That's a whole different skill. That's that's for sure. Like, yeah. But it, it's just a matter of opening your 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 perspective yeah. on it and figuring out what it is that you want to do. And uh, it's, it's, I don't see why not. You know. Yeah, it's just yeah, you got to figure out the time, and then you got to start doing it. Exactly, then... I am still, I am still, uh, like working, like so to speak, like not in mm -hmm. the game, just like on a regular ass job. So yeah, um, once that, once we figure out, you know, what opportunities they are, you know, like why not? Like, perfect, perfect time mm -hmm. to do so. Especially yeah. now that I know how to make video games, I just learned. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna make the game now. I totally just make yeah. games. Do you? No, I've always I've art? always been interested in making video games. Obviously, like like mm -hmm. especially like you, you and, and especially when you can make like sort of like micro stuff for like itch and all this stuff, mm -hmm. just sort of like people to learn. But you could still like sort of play these games, right? Yeah. Um, uh, there's all sorts of resources and, and but you know like I think like because as old as we are as old as I am like I was born at a time when like dabbing was extremely inaccessible especially because uh, mm -hmm. of me migrating from one country to another at a very early age there was no time mm -hmm. to settle and think about yeah. you know like what you want to do you know like if you wanted to in you know like I, I come from South America, so like you can imagine the amount of resources that uh, in the '90s mm -hmm. there for uh, video game development and all the stuff, right? Yeah. So, uh, lack thereof. So, but now, I mean, you know, the sky's the limit. Like you could go on YouTube and all this other stuff, and yeah. you could just learn an engine like on, on at home. Like, you know, it's almost making school a little bit uh, obsolete now. Yeah. Like, <laughs> un unnecessarily unnecessary to pay, so to speak. Yeah, I know, right? It's like the amount of thing. Like college is more about can you learn stuff online better, like in yeah. time to, for the test. Almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I mean sometimes like I have a friend going for uh, uh, computer science, and obviously like like they cover a whole lot. It's obviously like a big broad umbrella of things. Like and and uh, it, it it might not cover deving or video game development in particular obviously you're going to take a good deal of like skill out of that schooling mm -hmm. but like you want to be you some you there are people out there who may want to be more direct and just simply get right to it right yeah and, and learn the language learn the particular language of the engine you want to use and then and then learning how to graphic uh all sorts of like you know like how to how to work with the graphics within the engine but yeah yeah i mean i learned how to make games before let's see how much two years before i started a computer science degree and it was like i made a bunch of games i made a bunch and they like worked and played well and stuff but it was like after i learned computer science i was like wow my code was terrible like it was so yeah. bad but the thing was is that the game still played fine it's like nobody knew who played yeah. it or cared so it was just like yeah i mean it definitely helped that i learned computer science but it's like i mean it's not necessary definitely it, it, yeah it would have been it would have been better if you had someone by your side like tell you like the exact language that you were using there yeah deal. like on, within the engine that you were using at the time yeah yeah having someone who can just like answer questions is so helpful yeah absolutely yeah and of course, what what year would you say that have, what it was when you were going for, for like school like that? Like maybe like, twenty fifteen was when I started school. Twenty thirteen was when I started making games. True. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. No, that makes sense. Have you tried or have you thought of computer science as a degree? Honestly, pro I, I've seen my friend has shown me some of that stuff and it'll scare you away <laughs> oh, yeah. it's like i don't have the, i really don't have the time for it like that, that, that time has passed but i mean 
like I said, like you, I have, I do have that friend. I do have that sort of like, mm -hmm. like way to explain to me if that friend wanted to eventually learn like some kind of engine language, I guess it would be a little bit easier for him to delve into it. Yeah. Um, and so there you go. Like you have the, that, that's one resource that you can take upon. And of course, like there's more than people are more than willing to help you out, I think, or help me if I were to require mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah, just try to make some stuff as fast as you can. Make a bunch of small stuff and just yeah. get used to the tool. What tools do you use, by the way, for making memes? I know you mentioned um, Adobe well, Illustrator. Originally, originally, like a lot of it came down to, uh, I think, uh, how a lot of people do it. So you would Google it first, but it got to a point where it's like you want that. You want to have like multiple ways of like manipulating like things because you may want to have a picture of a chair and you want to sit someone on that chair but you can't do it because there is no photo of that character sitting down in the particular order uh, in the particular dimension that you want them in and mm -hmm. which that scenario you would look upon gmod and then sfm or blender like obviously gmod is like such an extremely like a approachable um resource because it's it's the you're playing in Half-Life 2, but you can you can yeah. down you can like literally drop a ragdoll and then move it in real time. It's not so much like Blender where there's the axis and oh, yeah. axes and you need to have a rig and all this other stuff. Like like um like it's kind of the hard work was kind of uh, is done for you kind of deal. So I'm now I'm blend I'm now I'm learning a little bit of Blender. I've I've been learning Blender for a little while, but um obviously that's where that's that's not as that's gonna take a little more time yeah blender is pretty complicated SF, sfm has been i mean i think a lot of people that uh, uh, whoever is uh like whoever is watching that has used blender like or sorry not blender sfm is extremely approachable like and it's almost like like kind of easy to use and animating is a total breeze like in it, i mean if you want to do something really impressive and, and 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 make it look like truly alive and believable within an animating standpoint obviously it's going to take a good deal mm -hmm. of time but the ui is like super welcoming and inviting and 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 it's it's allowed me to sort of like be able to take uh like uh, characters and and pose them in certain ways in order so i could like get them looking from behind or in front yeah. or or sit them down and then you take it on to obviously photoshop and then you do the rest of the magic there mm -hmm. um but actually i first started with uh because i was doing exclusively like deus ex memes originally like um i was going in game on deus ex and like going through like the console commands so you could like drop like a hundred jc's into the map and then like one <laughs> is walking and the other one is just kind of like standing still and then so like i would have to go into no clip and then like kind of like you know like like deal with that and uh but uh yeah no it, it's 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 if there is a program that can grant me a resource to manipulate an object or whatever like a mod uh, you know a model and all this stuff like mm -hmm. I, w I will use it for sure like even even just on the internet when they have like the like the 3d sites where you can just kind of like like you know uh orbit around like whatever like that's that's very all fair game mm -hmm. obviously obviously i think like i think my 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 specific scenarios obviously that i like to take I like to take uh, stock models, take their faces, and put them on video game characters. Yeah. And it, ends up, it ends up giving it a little bit extra life, I think. Yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> like that one's good. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> that one, you know what? Actually, with Quake, uh, I used uh, Trench Broom, which is a uh, which is oh, the yeah. level design. Yeah, you know, program creator of Cruelty for... Squad uses that yeah. for all the levels yeah so th that allowed that allowed me to a trench broom allowed me to make some of this stuff uh therefore quake because it, like there is no almost no resources for quake like if you wanted mm -hmm. to google quake ranger on for some reason even though like quake is like almost you know like 
a hundred years old now that you can't yeah. you, you can't find like no decent pictures of quake ranger on google so like like uh <laughs> i have to go on i have to go and download trench room and like learn it <laughs> so I can, yeah like like so i could get like good pictures of the shambler and 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 all this other stuff uh but yeah like trench room is also like a really great uh tool for sure it's mm -hmm. super easy as a creative as a creative like the snap and drag of trench room like the capability of like having to just draw out draw out what you want without the too much without any actually uh programming hassle like is it, it yeah. makes it it makes it a total breeze yeah they're really good at like separating the i guess designer from the code side of things in those yeah. tools yeah see like like that one with the squeezing the caca demon that was like sfm i think that was like sfm and then obviously some sprite work yeah huh so let's see so the model is done in sfm but the sprite is that also an sfm or did you do that no the sprite, the sprite you would take it into photoshop and then you would like kind of liquefy it so you could shrink it down into a little mm -hmm. Until you know, like, so this the, this caca demon looks like he's getting squished. So you in Photoshop you just squish him. But obviously, uh, I would have to render the I would have to render the dooms the doom guy's hand. So there's one picture of it where his finger is obviously open, and then another picture where I brought the fingers closer. Mm -hmm. So you end up having the sprite work from Photoshop where I just liquef liquefied it, make it shrink it down mm -hmm. and then put those two together. And then the back is just like a picture of yeah. any doom level, right? Um, oh, have you thought of selling a course on how to make stuff like this? That's also something that was within like Twitch idea kind of deal. You know what yeah. I mean? Like where it's like, yeah, if, if I could imagine that at some point I'd probably be kind of like, giving up like in the way that you learn in the way that you know how to how to make games for like 80 years or, or yeah. more i have used photoshop for almost more than 20 years and uh mm -hmm. like um i there's all sort i mean i'm still learning it because obviously like every new version of the photoshop is uh, totally different i just had gotten i just had gotten uh the newest one and it's like it's like a completely like the ui has been oh, completely yeah. great. so it's like i gotta learn a couple new things and how things behave but um yeah i mean i obviously know it relatively well and same thing with the like adobe illustrator which does like i said before like vector graphics um uh, which are good for like logos and fonts and all this other stuff. I did use a little bit of Dreamweaver when you had asked me if I had done any programming stuff. I had done some HTML, but I mean like that's oh, obviously yeah. completely unrelated to anything. I had to use <laughs> Flash as well. Um, I, I actually, when I went to school, they 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 made us do like an uh, interactive Flash thing, and so I had made like a small little point and click thing, but. Uh, um, overall yeah like this this one here is um a combination of both sfm and and obviously the real picture of the monkey yeah this yeah, is a good one transparent yeah i forgot to like it <laughs> um oh someone in the chat asked how old are you i'm 29 29 oh you're only three yeah. years older than me yeah i didn't i didn't want to i didn't want to predict if you were older or younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know as soon as he said you went to school, as soon as I heard you went to school in 2013 or, or so, I was like, yeah. okay. I I was in school at the same time though, because okay. when I was doing when I was doing QA for like Rot, I was I was still in school and stuff too. I was still a student. Um, but uh, yeah, there's all, there's all sorts of. Yeah, I was born in '92, so I'm I'm an old man now. <laughs> yeah, it feels like. The boomer shooter, I guess, caters to our generation a lot. And yes, yeah, older. exactly. Yeah, there's the uh, obviously there's been a resurgence of, of of obviously the interest, and obviously Doom Eternal has done relatively well, especially with mm -hmm. a new market, which is like very important because um, obviously that has uh, that kind of arena shooter has taken a huge backseat. Um, mm -hmm. You can't have, uh, you know, like and it, how do you bring back that market or how do you bring back that 
to the AAA market because it's like it's like that's that's what's going to bring back Quake and Doom is like how do you apply this to a new market, a new audience who are into all the new games that are up to that that are popular today and uh, you see it now with uh, I it's kind of great to see like I think like uh, guys who are younger who are about maybe 18 or 19 and they may have missed that time frame of of playing you know like quake when it first came out or whatever mm -hmm. like but it's in, it's it's great that they can look at doom for example who is, that is even though it's timeless like it is obviously limited in its graphics and in how yeah. it looks but they can look at it and understand why it's a good game or like why uh -huh. they can play they can play through it and be like yeah this is great especially like with quake who like like in quake being you know so rudimentary and look like even though someone some even though if you were to show it to some random person on the street and they tell you something like wow that looks terrible because i mean look at the guy's face you know what i mean like, yeah yeah but but there are young people who look at quake or play quake and they can like it even though they were born like 20 years after its release mm -hmm. um that's that's something that i'm always like really happy about that people can still play and enjoy the, the, those older games yeah yeah i i missed out a lot of those actually i, I didn't play them until much later i was like oh yeah damn, these like yeah. work really well that was like, me that was me with like yeah that, that that was me with um like um the first video game i played was like wolf 3d but i obviously that game came out like a year after i was born so i didn't play <laughs> yeah, them until yeah. like like much 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 later um, when I was a little bit more older, but I mean, like, like, there's, it's never too late to like, to play these games and like, and 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 get in the mindset of what it was like back then yeah. when you, you know, you didn't have like the the kind of multiplayer that 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 was back then with like dial up mm -hmm. and all this stuff like where like oh if like you wanted to play the game you had to disconnect the cell phone the, the, the telephone and all this other stuff like it's such a completely different world yeah. back then to what it is now <laughs> like like now everybody can be on the internet and all this other stuff it's, it's such a thing that we just take for yeah. granted now and we just like don't we just don't like think about anymore uh, did you read masters of doom yes i did yeah i did with uh um when i went to new york i took it with me and i read it and uh that i think that anyone who hasn't read it and is interested in like the literal genesis of mm -hmm. like the first person shooter like like look no further than that book like that book will tell you like absolutely everything like yeah. in regarding to its software and apogee and 3d realms obviously it focuses more on the two johns and like the 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 mm -hmm. batch it craziness that they went yeah. through back in the day yeah. and, 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 the, and the criminal and, and, and the uh, rock star lifestyle that they lived uh making all those games but i mean uh like respect dude you know like it's like those are those two guys are the yeah are, are the fathers of the first person shooter especially obviously Carmack who is like a total wizard like a, yeah it's crazy God being... he's done yeah, yeah. I've, I've read that book several times <laughs> I, yeah I want to read it I want to read it again um, I, I gotta get around to it for sure like, there's also uh, Hackers by Stephen Levy it's like about oh it's all about like computer I guess the history of computers and like hackers and software people in the US but it covers a lot of like the gaming era right before that right before um, I guess the FPS era so there's like yeah um, Sierra and Broderbund and all them was that I mean, the same was that the same writer or was that someone else no I think it's someone else because I, I, I remember, remember the same writer as Masters of Doom had made another book and I had like I had kind of like glimpsed over it but I think it had nothing to do with the gaming industry I think it was something yeah. entirely different because the way I remembered was that I remembered Masters of Doom looked at his other books and they all have terrible reviews <laughs> and yeah. Stephen Levy all his other books have great reviews <laughs> and he's like I a legend a, I, see he, I see he made a Facebook book that's going to be a riveting page turner oh <laughs> the inside there it is hackers heroes of the computer it's pretty crazy because he was like interviewing these people back in like the 80s 
And then yeah. he like went back and interviewed them like 15 years later, and then again 15 years later, and he's like, yeah, all these ones became super rich and famous. These ones didn't, and they're bitter about it. And like, and it's like a lot of the game designers from that era, they were also doing like ridiculous rock star lifestyle and stuff. Yeah, but they just some of them just dropped off. They're like, yeah, we're just checked out. We're not. We're done with that. We're rich. We're just gonna sit around. Yeah, games too much work That's now. Wild. Yeah, yeah, you know, like I, I, I thought about that all the time about these guys who were like who were who were programming since it since it since it was yeah possible. You know, like like since like so they know the languages from the very beginning. You know, and yeah. they grew and they and they grew along with it, and it, it that's also something like when uh, Masters of Doom is a perfect example, where like um, I think uh, Romero had gone to um, his the uh, university close by, mm -hmm. and he, they were they were programming with uh, like like cards, right? Like the, yeah. the big computers, you feed you feed them cards with punch, then they were punched, and that's how you program. That's how you program with those uh, pieces of hardware. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's and so like going from that and then growing along with that world is like I imagine he has like such a great understanding of, of, yeah of, of, of that of that uh, evolution of, of, of programming and, and to better be said but then I feel like it's also from what I've heard it's also really annoying for people because they like learn all these tools and then they become obsolete and then they have to learn yeah, new tools, exactly. and then those become yeah. obsolete. And it's like, yeah. okay, time to learn something new again. And yeah, like, yeah, that's something that I, yeah, that it always gets brought up all the time. Is like all these guys have to like, it, like, uh, it must have been such a pain to like learn this language that became obsolete within like a year. Like, and uh, I always bring up like, like a lot of people never take. You know, when you look at video games now, like the last three consoles, like, um, with. Like if you were to look at between the PS4 and the PS5 for the sake of argument, you could see that the graphics are not all together. It's not all too different, right? Yeah. Like, like there are some obvious like little quality of life things, on, and but like overall, like it's the same thing. When in '98, when you had that Quake and Half Life stuff, like, like every year the newer engine yeah. just looked entirely different, and it was like this. It was like this arms race of who had the best graphics, and so like you had, like you had Unreal going up against Quake Two, and then in a couple of years later you had like, you know, you had the you know uh, PS Two, and then stuff was just going by so quickly you just didn't have time to like the things were obsolete quick. Uh, yeah, and, you know, especially when two thousand and four rolled around with like Half Life Two and. And, mm -hmm. and Quake, or sorry, Doom 3, like, you see the difference between 98 and 2004, that's not an all different gap, right? Like, or that's not a very long time to yeah. have, you know, like, it, it, it's crazy that kind of jump. Like, every time you saw a new gameplay, or every time you saw a new uh, uh, trailer for a video game, it was like, what? Like, that looks better than what I played two years ago you know what i mean yeah yeah if, it's crazy but things have slowed down now it's subset substantially because i don't think we can catch up our hardware can't catch up to our like what it is that we're doing and obviously with uh yeah with consoles in particular you're looking at uh affordability you know consoles can't have like 3070s or whatever 3080s on yeah and, and stuff like that so you got to take in that into accountability yeah, this I think a lot of the improvements have also just been on like making it easier for developers to that too yeah, make things exactly. like I mean it used to be if you wanted bounce lighting in your engine you would just put a bunch of lights all over shining on different things. Yeah. Like um, it was like with Duke 3D there was like all this technique of like yeah. ha adding extra rooms and then making them a different color and then or whatever like it mm -hmm. was like weird like techniques on how to add lighting to your games um, yeah Whereas, now it's just drop the light <laughs> yeah and it's got the bounce lighting built in and it's like it just saves you a lot of time but it doesn't look all that different versus if you manually put in the bounce lighting kind of no exactly yeah. so it's just it's more easy for the developers but not as visible or yeah not as visible for the player yeah 
you don't even notice, especially with trench broom, you look at that stuff, it just simply put the light down and then you just deal with the values and mm -hmm. you're done. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Just remember in Unity when they were like, free version, you don't get shadows, and everyone was doing all these hacks and workarounds. Like, oh, you could render shadows? render the yeah. shadow to a sprite and then you place it below the player. And then all this stuff, and then shadows came out on the free version, but only directional shadows, and you could only have it on one thing, and it was like a big deal. And then they made it free for everyone. It was like, wow, everyone can do this now. And then Unreal made it free because it was like, um, it was like, well, Unity's doing it. We have to, you know, we have to make our engine free now too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. It's a time has changed all those engines and stuff and especially unreal like has stayed you know on top the whole time since like 98 and all that like the engines oh yeah that's crazy that they're still around and like they stand the test of time <laughs> i think i was recently on stream i was i found some old gaming magazine pc gaming magazine and there was yeah. an article on how to get into the games industry and they put like a this entire list of like a hundred game companies that you could reach out to to contact for jobs. And I tried looking them up and like, I think like nine out of 10 of them was like bankrupt in 2005. <laughs> and it was like, wow. And yeah, this was no. like a 98 article. Yeah, I was actually watching some videos on the Silicon Graphics uh, um, oh, yeah. computers back um, like yesterday. And I'm so like enamored by those things, like because they're just mm -hmm. like refrigerators, like they and they have like motherboards that are just strictly for the RAM, and um, Dang. and the thing the things just weigh like a billion pounds, and and like it just like you know how fast they kind of like dwindled and after some time like uh, and, but that was like at one point that that was the masters of the universe, like to make movies and games, like obviously. Um, um, Mario 64 was made on a silicon computer and the, the um, Donkey Kong Country all in Jurassic Park was made on a mm -hmm. silicon computer uh, and it's just like one at one moment those things are you know the they can charge whatever they wanted for those computers 30k for yeah. a computer like that right and now they're they're gone like that's it yeah and you get a computer way more powerful for like nothing yeah exactly and it's just like accessibility is important uh like you said like being able to not only uh give the tools for the developers but obviously also like being affordable mm -hmm. uh, oh when do you have to go by the way <laughs> i just realized you've been talking for like two hours Oh, no, I mean, fuck, just chilling. But, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, uh, I probably have to uh, probably go around 9 o'clock to go out and do some some mm -hmm. IRL things. But, uh, no, I mean, overall, it's been pretty fun. I, I, I'm, thank you for giving me the uh, the ability to, like, dwell into Godot and... Uh, oh, yeah, and just, no um, Thank God for confusion. You know, it's, it's learning all this... Uh, it's that's the first step for for everyone to learn is just uh, getting into it first of all yeah the first step is the most important one yeah but uh, i dwell into new software all the time i'm always mm -hmm. willing to learn all sorts of new stuff that's where like blender and all this other stuff came to effect because it was like hey this looks really great i think like that what what people are doing on it or, or it, it can make it look almost as good as anything that is that would cost me money you know um uh, why not learn it you know mm -hmm. yeah and and I, in the I end think... as, as the dev it, it helps you out it helps if you yeah. want to make something right yeah how yeah. do you make your 30 how do you make your 3d stuff the unity or i use oh for graphics i mean i use blender you use blender oh yeah there yeah you go. and just blender and some kratos 
sometimes depends what I'm working on if it's like easy to flatten otherwise I do stencil painting in blender because it's so easy to just paint textures onto a 3d model directly oh yeah yeah true yeah I used to do I used to do sculpting on ZBrush because it was like so easy mm. to do yeah and uh, and uh, but I mean ZBrush costs money um, but uh, yeah, it does. The, the, there's a lot of there's a lot of tools out there and especially for like or like I, I seen some of the work that you had done, especially with that new game that you're working on, and that, that's like, it looks it looks like so great. I think that it's oh, it, thank that, you. That, yeah. that's what it comes down to, you know. Because when I, when I was talking about like Quake, people still looking at Quake and being like and accepting it for what it is. Yeah. Now you have low poly games that are being made now. Yeah. And everybody's and and there isn't that kind of like shallow mentality. Like we had a long a little while ago when it was like, you know, like oh this isn't like a fucking uh, a photorealistic game. You know what I mean? Like, like, mm -hmm. like, like people can look at a game and, and understand it for being like good gameplay first over graphics. Like nothing, ha not everything has to look like yeah The Last of Us or something like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, insane. Like, I think like the industry has taken a bit of a break and 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 settled and uh, now you have a, a a massive indie um scene of like guys making not only like retro things but like low poly ps1 kind of looking yeah, yeah. graphics where um the focus is on gameplay um and I, I mean man i'd i'd totally be down to make some kind of something similarly like especially with the with the success of cruelty squad and and, mm -hmm. and how something like something like the way cruelty squad looks and, and works and people love it for it it's like yeah it's 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 such a good time for creatives for creatives to uh, to not worry so much about like the grass or the, the yeah. uh, you know yeah. or like <laughs> Or some some really un, un, unnecessary thing like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like so. Like I was able to make the game better, like my game Rot Flesh, because originally it was a top-down shooter. Because I was like, I'm not good enough at 3D art to make something good in first person. But yeah. then I'm like seeing, um, you know, I was seeing all these low poly games, and I'm seeing that D makes are popular, and I was like, maybe I could I could do this. I can do this yeah. style. So maybe I can make it first person again. And it was like. And yeah. now it's like way better because of that I'm like wow this is awesome and it's like a fun style to work in it's like you can use textures and make things look cool and have lighting and you don't have to like stress over like making it realistic and look good because I've noticed a lot of the times even if, if it's like slightly amateurish if you're doing like high res detailed stuff even if it's just slightly amateurish it looks awful like it just yeah. looks terrible and it's like whereas if you just embrace like the style like of the jank or whatever it just looks a yeah. million times better yeah i mean like if you just have a strong creative direction and then just keep by it and everything looks like that it all connects together within a within its own art style like like you can make something look that uh, people could end up loving that kind of even if it's low poly or that there's you know, People are so okay with like being able to play a game like that now, and 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 not fuss so much about like what it looks like, and more about how it feels and how it uh, how it functions, and the mechanics and all this other stuff. Um, and then perfect example, obviously, a lot of new blood stuff is not is 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 more low poly like not necessarily low poly because i think i when you look at gloomwood like there is a great deal of like graphic work being yeah. done in that game right now which is like impressive um but it works for that game because because of the art direction that it's taking um yeah and everything ends up when you put all of those things together and the creative and the art direction is obviously very connected and and well put together you end up actually making a a game look good by by having all these things put together within one that like within one you know vision because yeah. i mean it, I, if you've seen pictures of gloomwood back when it was like in super super early like it was just sprites and, and like single images and stuff and now obviously it's a whole different league of its own but um did they have exactly images of that somewhere 
no, I think uh, I think Dylan had posted like one or two pictures of like what it looked like when he was first working on it, but now obviously it's a uh, it's a whole entirely different demon. Yeah. Uh, where would I find that? If you, I think that uh, yeah, uh, the third, the third person, the first one, the first guy. Uh, one more. Wait. Does that? I, it's African, yeah, that guy. Okay. So okay. he's he's he had uploaded a, a couple pictures, uh, like one picture or two of like uh, what uh, Gloom would look like like years ago, um, and it was impressive to look at, just like because people don't take it to perspective, like like the time frame for all that stuff, and it's like man, like mm -hmm. you just you're just like really like taken back by like the amount of work that people put into something when they're really passionate about it you know yeah but i'm excited from gloomwood it looks like a lot of fun yeah i've, I've seen people who played it who seem to yeah. like it uh, i think huh. the demo's available right now because of realm steep on the weekend and all that oh right yeah oh i should get there's it. a lot of demos on there yeah it's funny I'll, I'll like play low poly games or with these old style games and i'm like wow this looks amazing and then i play a modern game and i look and i find like a stretched texture in a corner i'm like this looks like shit <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah i know but exactly that, that's that's the, that a perfect example of like excellent art direction and just like creative direction of like like playing within your limitations and then just expanding on them but like when a game is trying to do too much and when a game is trying to like be like hyper realistic or like photorealistic or what have you the the one thing is that is is what will break it all down is just the like you said like the one random texture that doesn't look good out of the rest that looks yeah you know like almost photorealistic but uh, yeah exactly with all the stuff that when you play with a low poly or the uh, even pixel art has been so popular for so long it was just the perfect example of uh, of uh, Oh, there it is. Go oh. up a little bit. Yeah, Oops. just skip. No, I just scroll up a bit. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, because you're a little delayed. That's why. That's oh, why. yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay, right there. That's that's the picture I'm. Oh, damn, about. 2015. Whoa. Yeah, so there you go. That's a perfect example. <laughs> I kind of like that shader. Whoa. Yeah, it looks, it, look, it looks pretty. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty interesting. Especially like the pistol model looks great. Yeah, there, there's a lot of contrast and stuff like that. It all looks like really interesting and industrial. Mm -hmm. But man, the game's changed altogether. Yeah, it's all different now. I mean, when you look at low poly stuff like like dusk, also also is almost like a quake in look you know and but i mean i don't have to sing it dusk praises obviously it's a, a, a total beloved uh shooter revival mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah that's that's so cool like it just blew up with that <laughs> now everyone's doing yeah. it it yeah, was exactly. i think i remember the first d makes or the first ps1 style d makes were by 98 d make on youtube I remember yeah. seeing his stuff like years ago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. millions of views. And then when I was doing YouTube, I was like, I bet I could do that and get millions of views. And I, I did get a fair amount of views, and that that was like what first kickstarted my channel. Yeah, and uh, people love to see that stuff. Like, like especially when it comes to like new games. Like when you look at there's some other stuff where it was like newer games with Atari covers, and so mm. like. It would be like it would be like really detached like like really great illustrations of like yeah i don't know what it was like and you you've seen the atari art like for the games and stuff like and they look like totally different like jailbreak for example or whatever um yeah they look amazing this old yeah but then you put the atari game in and it's just a bunch of dots um is it these no i think that's just i think that's I think that's so like, not working. I think that's like movies on on Atari on Atari cartridges. Fake video. Game. Oh, based on modern movie story. Okay. Yeah, but it was like it, it was like that old school Atari box art, 
that that looks like a, like a science fiction epic and then obviously when you put the game in it's just a bunch yeah. of dots <laughs> and but, then they um, started just using screenshots it was like yeah exactly lame. i can't click on these yeah. what's the point of an image that, if that, you can't that, zoom that, in that's that's obviously an extension of that it, yeah that, that destructoid yeah to me it didn't count who's going to destructoid anymore no i'm kidding Oh, I, I totally forgot they exist. Yeah, I used to go on it all the time. You used to, it, is, it was great uh, when I used to go on it because you used to be able to make your own re reviews and then it would go into oh. a uh, into a pool of like like community mm -hmm. reviews and then so the community would just read each other's stuff. But I was I was a kid and, and uh, my grammar wasn't very good. It probably still isn't. So there's. I, I don't know what the state of Destructoid is now. Left for dead. I'm also oh, like with uh, with Newgrounds catching popularity again. It's like such a like. Well, I mean, <laughs> Newgrounds, has always, uh, Newgrounds has always been popular, but I mean, like, yeah. like the the fact that like when you have like that new rhythm game that came out for Newgrounds, like that. Uh, oh, Friday Night Funkin'. Yeah, it like had that catching fire like that like we had gone through so many rhythm genres like throughout the years and Activision and had made so many rhythm games with Guitar Hero and all this stuff and we just we just got so sick of it and like it, that's <laughs> why nobody wanted the plastic guitars anymore we were all hoarding hoarding like all mm -hmm. of the rock bands peripheral Donkey Kong uh, the congas like all this peripherals sitting around taking off space and we just all got sick of it and then so new rhythm game comes out that's almost like in par with ddr mm -hmm. like the like the very first like popular rhythm game that i can think of where people were like hor like people were crowding arcades to play like back in the day uh, and and obviously five nights catch that are uh, that uh, th that yeah like that rhythm game being mm -hmm. as popular as it is now is like such a huge like surprise it goes to show yeah damn good good strong artwork and then good strong artwork and and some good music on it and you know you bring bringing back rhythm games again and then also yeah, I, I find it hilarious how um, among us just annihilated Every yeah. triple A game. Among Us is like it's like wow, like incredible, like just amazing like that. I mean I it, it's it's such a testament of like the indie developer always pushing forward the industry. Like mm -hmm. like like it it's never gonna be a triple A game anymore that will like that will that yeah. will change the industry. It's gonna be like Minecraft. It's gonna be like Among Us. You know what I mean? Like as yeah. much as a meme of those things are like now um you can't you can't deny minecraft's like legacy like like the best-selling game of all time like yeah it kinda, and 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 it being made by like originally by one dude yeah who just wanted to make a dwarf fortress kind of like spiritual successor or inspiration to dwarf fortress but dwarf fortress is an entirely different monster of its own but um yeah, like I always said, like that the indie dev is always going to be the one to push the industry forward and in what it is that people want to mm -hmm. play. And Among Us, obviously, also being part of that, um, part of that demographic. Like, like, and it's such a simple game that you could just literally play it on your phone, like on the go. And and there is the, the difficulty lies in the social, um, in the in the social. Uh, mechanics of the game where it's not really the game is difficult the game is easy but yeah. like the uh what would you call it like the con the, the conning people out of believing that you're not the killer and all this other yeah. stuff that's where the real the gameplay yeah. is and it's like it, you, you know like I, I mean you know what though by even going back further than that obviously like that takes uh, inspiration from uh t trouble in terrorist town Oh um, yeah, which came from the card game Mafia. Did you ever play that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, all of this like community-made games were like 
uh, you know, everything that is popular now was a mod made by a couple of guys a couple of years ago. Like, yeah. uh, like Team Fortress 2, uh, or sorry, Team Fortress in general was a mod, Counter-Strike was a mod, um, all of this stuff was made by a bunch of people. And now it's like the now it's the best uh, or the most played game on Steam. You know, like TF2 has been going on for like ten years or more. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then like, um, did you play Their Billions? Do you know that game? Yeah, I, yeah. I do. Actually, yes, I did. It's 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 so good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, it really reminds me of a lot of custom apps on StarCraft One. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, you know, a, a perfect example too of MOBA and, or mm -hmm. sorry, all the MOBAs are originally, can't, are thanks to, uh, what is it a, a Warcraft mod, or was it a Starcraft mod? Warcraft. Yeah. I think Dota. I think Dota was a Warcraft mod. Yeah, Warcraft three. Initially, yeah. I remember my brother's friends played that a lot. Yeah, exactly. So it's now MOBAs are, or were at some point, the lead esport probably still are mm -hmm. i mean league league hasn't left like the top three yeah. or top two right like i don't play mobas at all i, I they're a complete science to me but mm -hmm. um I, you can't deny the 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 scope of what people are playing want to play now um and royales are obviously the battle royale obviously was originally i think a minecraft mod like if I'm not mistaken, and then obviously oh. there was like that H1Z1. Yeah, mod, there is. Or sorry, game. There's also Arma mods. That oh, like Arma, Arma. Yeah, Arma. I think games. it started with. Yeah. Uh, what's it? Mock. What was it? Hunger Games. I thought that was what started do people doing battle royale, and then that came from the movie Battle Royale. In like yeah, the 90s. Came, yeah. The battle royale movie was like also like obviously inspiration to that. But yeah, it makes it. It's like all of it derived from community, free, you know, projects. Um, you look at um, you look at all those, and I mean, you look at Valve, what it is today. Like I think most of those guys are just straight up from the mod community. Yeah. Like a lot of the people that Valve just straight up hired, like like people within their, their modding community and it's like such a like way into the, the the industry that way too right and it's and and the valve has made their stuff so like accessible like going back to both sfm and obviously all the other yeah. uh, tools to to create levels on the source engine um yeah like it's it's it all comes back full circle yeah i think i was thinking recently about Valorant wouldn't exist if it wasn't for John Carmack. <laughs> no, exactly. Well, I, 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 let's be honest, nothing would exist without John Carmack. Like, it, John Carmack is like, like he, I don't know. Because he both made the engines, but then he was like insistent that they be open source and easy to mod. Yeah. And like, and then that led to you know, you know, Source Engine came from that, and then that valve took and then they made it open they kept it open for modding and people made team fortress and then people yeah. made uh you know later on what's it mobas i guess warcraft and mobas and then eventually down the road that would get combined into valorant hero based team shooter no exactly like, damn you exactly. could trace everything all the way back <laughs> like yeah it, it, everything is like so clear found found like like you could just track it all back to like a certain point um and uh, I think with the when I think that with like uh, it software like you have to thank Scott Miller as well for being the one to sort of like popular or like make DRM what it is like like um, he's the one that kind of helped out it software with uh, you know mm -hmm. the, the shareware uh, making making those shareware games right or making mm -hmm. that shareware practice like and and now that's obviously the same thing with early access like uh and uh, it it's it's like it's like i said it's like everything can be just easily like found looked back to like to the ones who started it all mm -hmm. uh, then i'm you know both uh, john carmack probably has you know looked back to other personalities that unfortunately i would i'm not very familiar with but like 
people before him who did crazy stuff, like especially before his time. But yeah. I mean, that that's the time frame of like, damn, like years ago. Yeah. I mean, there's never there's never enough shortage of like singing Carmax praises. Yeah, damn. And then he just kept going and like building yeah. rocket ships and then like he got bored <laughs> no, he got like, bored of video games he's like i'm gonna just go make like gonna be a rocket scientist now and then everyone's like everyone who worked with him is like yeah he doesn't really talk to us anymore he's all like yeah i'm not really big on nostalgia <laughs> just yeah <laughs> he just moves on he's like uh yeah i, I just single-handedly like like push the industry forward like 20 years like now i'm just gonna go make <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. And then he got into VR. Now he's doing AI. Yeah, exactly. I think he did. He sell did he sell Oculus? I think he sold Oculus to Facebook. No, he didn't own Oculus. Somebody else did, and they sold. Oh, it true. To him. He was just working within the team, right? Yeah, Facebook hired him. Oh, it's okay. kind of sad that Facebook, the most closed source, you know, like yeah. don't let I anyone mean, use our software or anything. Yeah, Got it's him. a bit of a shame. Same same thing kind of applies to like it's one of those things where it's like like how like if you were to get asked how much is your passion project worth, like you couldn't give them a price, right? But yeah. I mean when you look at when you look at stuff like Minecraft and stuff like that, that was like such a like like uh, like a like a yeah. child of a, 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 a poster face for the for the indie scene and now it's obviously owned by microsoft and microsoft and it's like how much are you willing to how much money are you willing to get for to give up your passion project or like like your like legacy for the lack of better term right like um obviously minecraft being like huge and and, and it spawned minecraft is in the same way as doom where like they both like changed everything regarding and now you still see its effect take today with like crafting games right like yeah. games with survival and minecraft uh, or crafting uh mechanics like just how you had doom clones back in the day with like for years like no other fps after doom was was anything other than just a doom clone now there mm -hmm. you have all sorts of like like pseudo like craft make crafting mechanics like yeah. like building building uh uh you know you have rust right like yeah like i don't like to say that terraria was 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 too yeah, much of a minecraft clone and i think you get in trouble for saying that so i mean like yeah. um but i mean nonetheless like after minecraft there was all of this like all of these games had like adopted that kind of like same like survival mechanic yeah. um and now you obviously have like fortnite with like the, all that building that they do in that game yeah. and, and all oh, this other stuff right? thanks for the raid vimlark we're just talking about uh memes and games with uh fabino here is, is it fabino or fabino or it's fabino yeah okay fabino the famous meme creator on twitter <laughs> yeah <laughs> famous meme and uh, yeah, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, the reason why I have like Kino in the first, the first was so people would know how to say it. Oh, okay. because if, if you say Vino, yeah, right, it runs Kino. So that's the only reason why I'd have it like before my name, so people would know how to say it. Because I, I would, yeah. I would play Siege, and I would have, and I would have Fabino and my name, and people would be, they would people would say like Fabino, oh. or and stuff like that. And it's like, how do I make people? Oh, <laughs> that's clever, <laughs> right? So it was like it was like just a name to guide people towards it. I used to misread that as King Fabino. Yeah, <laughs> I think people, people say people say that anyway. It's like, <laughs> like all right, I can't stop you guys from from butchering my name. It's fine. It's all fun anyway. I was putting butts on people for a while anyway, so I mean, you, know, <laughs> you can't you don't have to take me that seriously. Uh, <laughs> I like how you shop your photo, your profile picture, and everything too. Yeah, that yeah. I guess I guess. <laughs> hold on, let me let me look over here at your chat. Uh, there was a. Uh, 
I think a lot of people always ask me this question, if that's me on the picture or not, it is me. Um, that's a picture from 2003, uh, me on Splash Mountain. Uh, a lot of people ask me, like, why do you look so scared? And the truth is <laughs> that I wasn't scared. But as a kid, I had realized a small, a small like technique on how to not get that feeling when you go down a coaster. And you have to scream as loud as you can. And if you scream as loud as you can, you don't feel that like a like really like oh, awful feeling of going down the coaster, right? So so here comes this drop of Splash Mountain. And so I'm I'm like, here it comes, and so it took it takes that picture of me and I look like I am I am in pain. <laughs> but in reality I'm trying to fight that feeling of like of yeah. like dropping, right? And uh, I used to use it a lot as like a display pictures like before Twitter, like ages ago before Twitter. And it's crazy because I'm using it now and people have told me that they have seen that picture as like reaction stuff and like other stuff <laughs> like around the net. So if the picture was somewhat of a notorious thing, like at some point, I, I don't know. But um, I just wanted to I wanted to figure out like an identity where I don't have to borrow from game so to speak like i don't want to identify myself as like some kind of like um like care like a mob or some kind of character from a certain game right yeah like i wanted the i wanted the twitter account to be me but i also be obviously wanted to have some kind of i wanted to have a little bit of control over my privacy so it was like it was like why don't i just take this old picture of <laughs> yeah. me on a roller coaster and it's it's me it's it is 100% me. So I used that picture for a really long time, and I've done all sorts of uh, shot uh, sh uh, shoots for it. Um, let me see, because I I do have. I, I'm, I have. I've been thinking about changing my profile picture because it's like just a character from a game I made like six years ago, and everyone's like, "What? Why is that your yeah, profile yeah. picture?" I'm like, "Well, I mean, you know, like uh, uh, Dust Dev has kept his photo the same for like as long as I've known him, like." And yeah. he's known himself as Dust Step. So there's obviously games. I obviously there are games that uh, we uh, that we look into, or sorry, that we make, and we feel as if like obviously yeah. we're strengthened by it, like or that's our that's the way we are identified a lot of the times, so like by the stuff that we make. So, I mean, obviously, like that newer game that you're working on is what's garnering quite a good deal of uh, popularity for you oh um, yeah and uh, that one's yeah i'm gonna show you this all right this is, i'm gonna uh... find i've been working on um the cover art for that game Let's see if i can find it it's still like early phase okay this is like early phase stuff for cover art I oh to, yeah, look at that. I need to put like a hand holding a heart here. And then it'll keep extending over with the logo and stuff. I need and to make the scarring better. In, uh, in, this is, is that Krita. like some kind of like Photoshop? Uh, like not like a photo, like a painting. Like an alternative yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Krita open source has painting and Photoshop. A lot of tooling stuff. It's pretty good. Yeah, damn, yeah, you're really good at it. You're really good at <laughs> rendering and stuff. It's like not my main thing. It was, this is what I almost went to school for. Okay, yeah, wow. Uh, yeah, that's great. See. You linked. Oh, do I have to be logged in on Facebook to. Do I don't these? think so. I hadn't made it public. Okay, cool. Oh, damn. <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> all the edits I have done with, uh, with the coaster meme. So it's all like different games and stuff. I think I had made some more that I haven't uploaded on it mm -hmm. on here but uh it was like uh it was like yeah like uh, all sorts of like different ones made by other people and myself that one on the bottom right is me wearing like think a uh, gaucho glasses or what I don't remember yeah, yeah. what they're called but they're they, it was like me making an alternative uh, alternate account um <laughs> And just disguising myself with those sunglasses so people don't think it's me, but obviously it's me. Um, <laughs> uh, what is yeah, this? That one is Stripe. That one was made by FPS Carol. FPS Carol loves Stripe. 
and so she had made that one okay and in strife there's like these little spiders that run around and stuff and it's like a it's like a doom wad almost like it's uh -huh. a doom wad but there's a little bit of immersive sim qualities to strife where like there's a hub world and you can take alternate alternate routes but it's within the doom engine um i think night dive had made a uh, a port for it more recently and you can play it now um Oh yeah, there's... But yeah, like there's all sorts of different games. That yeah. that one right there with the Bloodborne one on the left is actually a different picture of me on a roller coaster as well. <laughs> <laughs> that that helps me actually in pain. <laughs> <laughs> and someone had put the Bloodborne stuff on there. Yeah, the, dang, yeah there's like, like two pictures. Yeah. Who are all the legendary meme creators in the boomer shooters? Like there's you, there's FPS Carol, there's uh, yeah, exactly. there's someone else. I can't remember. I mean, Gianni's a fair bet too. I mean, he obviously like voices a lot, and especially he's, oh, he's yeah, been yeah. catching he's been catching a lot of work for like New Blood and all sorts of other shit. Like, mm -hmm. like he's he's almost. I mean, he's with he's he's with Stefan Waits right now, who would voice Caleb, and the, like that's oh damn quite, quite yeah. a big deal, right? Like, like uh, legendary voice actor uh, Stefan Waits. Oh, I am logged in on Facebook. Whoops. Hope I didn't just dox myself. I well, you can't see my last name. Uh, whatever. People could find me if they wanted to. <laughs> I'll just, I'll, I'll just send, I'll, I'll send you a, a picture of me uh, on a coaster, on a roller coaster. <laughs> Need to get some roller coaster pictures. I've never been on a yeah. roller coaster. Oh no? my god! Why is it like? It's like auto filling stuff. It's... Yeah, I know. I'm like it's annoying when it have when when that's why well that's one of the caveats of streaming it's like you gotta have like i think i would have just have a, a computer for it by itself yeah <laughs> where it's just kind of like it's just completely just doesn't automatically start inputting all sorts of random yeah. or like like chrome starts inputting all sorts of random shit that you put in the past yeah i'm trying to like have it I, well, I was trying to do a separate browser so I didn't have to worry about that. But then I've yeah. had to log into stuff on Chrome because Firefox can't do anything. Oh, yeah. I used to use Firefox all the time back in high school. I mean, I kind of stopped. Oh, yeah. I think cause it was like Chrome. Because I think Chrome was just kind of like, yeah, just so much browser, better. right? Yeah. But I think alternatives are obviously like granted and taken for granted. I think you could use mm -hmm. something a little bit less uh, invasive but there's all sorts of yeah that's I haven't made one in a long time one of any of these but I always wanted to <laughs> minus tactic means are so good yeah I I was thinking about it I was gonna make something else with the Linus prism I actually had made a 3d model on blender of the Linus prism I haven't I I have to go and open it back up again because it's so easy, right? You just like make the triangle and then you just put the texture to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I was like, all right, all right, we're learning, we're learning uh, 3D modeling right now. Oh, now I have to log in. Oh wait, no, I don't. Okay. Dang, can't believe they found a sculpture of you. Oh yeah. That was when that was when someone had, was sharing around those like uh, those uh, sculptures of Venice, like like they were like muscular men and like sculptures like marble sculptures of Venice, and then they had like these big asses, and so like <laughs> and so like people were adding me on it, being like, "Did you sculpt this?" And so then I had made that like as like a, a like as a like as an ancestor. <laughs> uh, team Fortress. I've never actually played Team Fortress, I just realized. No, you haven't? Oh. <laughs> I have to play so many of these games. Yeah. I've, I've, With Team Fortress, it's like, it's like, I don't know, I think that the golden age, or the golden time frame to play it is, I think, personally, is kind of past, but, uh, I mean, it's an undying game, all sorts of people are playing it still, and yeah. it's, it's, it's worth a check. Especially the classic, the old one. Oh, yeah. I just realized the only Doom, like, unmodded Doom I've played was on Game Boy. Oh, yeah. True. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The only one I played on PC was Brutal Doom. Oh, true. Yeah, everybody, I, everybody plays 
has played Brutal Doom, even even those who aren't totally into uh, like modding their games, because a lot of people just are okay with playing the vanilla version. They're n I, I, mm -hmm. not too interested in exploring, you know, like uh, more more within the community. But uh, everyone has always at least tried Brutal at some point, just because it's yeah, you know, just bad shit. Yeah, it's, like <laughs> it's just crazy. Game. Yeah. Yeah, didn't that influence how the Dune 2016 ended up being designed or something? So it was so popular. Actually, yeah, because we had when when I had seen when I had seen the trailer for or the first trailer for Doom 2016 and it had executions, I was like that that was taken from Brutal Doom for like in the sense that like like yeah, like there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, ingredients towards and to Doom 16 that felt like we're taken out of Brutal Doom. It, it wouldn't surprise me if if they did if they did take something from uh, some ideas. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Even even Romero had said, like, imagine if we imagine if in back when. Oh yeah, that's I remember that. That came out instead, right? Yeah. Like. I don't know. I that would. I don't want to think about that dimension, <laughs> that alternative. <laughs> How would that even God knows, happen? God knows what what would have happened. You know. Damn. <laughs> yeah, those are some old ones. Yeah. Yeah, there's some old memes. Deus Ex shit post. <laughs> Let's see. What's your first? How far back does it go? I don't think they're in any order. Oh. I think they're just kind of just kind of dumped them in there. Oh yeah, that's just a bunch of ra okay. They're all together kind of thing, like more than just the X. Yeah, kind of I remember seeing that that going viral. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, there was a there was a lot of DX ones that kind of took off, and when I wasn't on Twitter. What's your most viral post ever? I think okay, like I think my most. That's a good question. I don't really know. Because there's a few that have gotten close to the same. Um, I think that... Well, I mean, I, honestly, like, right now, like, that Silent Hill Seinfeld logo kind of took off quite a good bit. Um, but I think that... Uh, Can we find I think that... Story? I think that Resident Evil 8 one... Of uh, that you had you had seen it as you quickly went by. Oh, uh. the Resident Evil stuff tends to really take off, and I think like like the one with Heisenberg saying that he had a Atsune Miku factory. That one, <laughs> that one did really. That one, I can't think of any other post that did as good as that. Um, trying to think, a lot of the cheek stuff like went crazy too like there was a the one doom slayer one that i had made where it looks like the cover for final fantasy 7 um because i think it was on purpose like it's supposed to be a final fantasy 7 remake uh like s congratulations from the id software team or something like that uh -huh. and uh and so it was that yeah, that one over there uh, 40k oh, likes yeah, right there yeah yeah that one that one's gone that one that one i think I can't think of one that did better than that, but I mean, that one, it, that one is, uh, I've seen that one get shared around a lot. Damn. I wonder, I can't remember how many, like, I have one super viral tweet. I made a Death Stranding demake and Hideo Kojima retweeted it. Oh, true. Yeah, okay. I, I, I Right. And I, th that's what I was thinking about earlier, too. It was like, yeah. And it's funny, because I, I put the hashtag for the Godot engine in it and yeah. and now it's the most liked tweet that has that hashtag <laughs> no that's that's excellent and it's such a, it's such a good model too like it, it doesn't look it, it looks like legit like it looks like a like a ps1 like oh, a real yeah. legit ps1 kind of looking you know like 98 model kind of deal you know what i mean like it, it it looks it looks pretty good and now you're looking obviously at bloodborne d makes like the ps1 bloodborne Oh yeah, sort of uh, rework, but I think that one's being worked on the Unreal Engine. I'm pretty sure. Wait, D make in Unreal of what? 
Oh, of Bloodborne, right, yeah. yeah I was Bloodborne. thinking of Dusk for some reason. Yeah. Let's see if I can find... Oh, here it is. So, yeah, I randomly discovered a meme on Reddit. Right? Yeah. Somebody used my image. I was like, what? That's never happened before. Yeah, I had seen this. <laughs> yeah, it looks it looks so good. And I think that it did. <laughs> Such a dumb... Like, how much, time did it, how much time did that take you? This, I actually streamed making it. Oh, you did? Okay, I did. Let me Missed see if I can find it. video. No, it would be under most popular. This. Second most popular video. This is, like, unintentionally one of the best thumbnails I've ever had. I was like, I need a thumbnail, and I think this was one of, like, the previews or something. And I was just okay. like, yeah, that looks fine. And it's, like, such a great thumbnail. <laughs> really, just the dumb, you know, yeah, Sam exactly. Harris model. Wow. Yeah, here's the, uh... Here's the stream. Two and a half hour stream. I start from scratch. I uh, oh, thanks for the hundred bits, Miser. And then um, I'm like getting reference uh, pictures, and I like pulled a lot of yeah. I went through like a video yeah. and pulled screenshots to make the model. Yeah, you can see I put together a whole image sheet. This is my sprite or er, uh, my texture sheet that I used. Very jank, but it worked. Yeah. And then. Yeah, so that's the whole stream. And this is like, it's unlisted. It's gotten 50,000 almost. People are like, this is one of the best tutorials ever. <laughs> <Just streaming. laughs> it's, it's a good resource for like learning how to make like uh, um, like low poly stuff for the, the on Blender. Cause I mean, uh, you can't, yeah. there's not enough shortage of that stuff. Like, I mean, for the most part, like if you wanted to, as a beginner, learn how to 3D model, why? Mm -hmm make something low poly make something that doesn't need yeah. uh, that much work i had pulled out i had pulled up marathon's guns or the guns from the guns from marathon so like the assault rifle and stuff like that and they just look like one big piece of like metal it looks like it looks sleek but it's just like one big gray you know like object so it was it was easy to kind of play with blender and try to make that gun in mm. the uh in that in on blender yeah it's like that yeah. gun kind of thing right uh, it looks it looks strange and it's not the most eye pleasing it's not the most eye pleasing weapon but i mean it, it's perfect for like blender if you wanted to make like you know babbling and stuff like that yeah there's a uh, oh, I'm, I, I'm, this. I'm currently playing through marathon for the first time uh you can there are there are open source Version for uh, this is the Bungie's like very first game before Damn. Halo, yeah. So this is, this is like the the genesis of Halo. Uh, uh, there's it's really well written. There's some good stories in there that is told through the AI that lives in the Marathon ship. Um, uh, it's they're they're good games. I'm playing through them right now. I think what they're they think all three of them. There's like three of them, and I'm still through the first one. Damn. <laughs> it's so like interesting finding out how old some of these companies are in the games they made before. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, and uh, they, the 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 marathon helmet looks like an aviator helmet, like an like a like a flight helmet where the visor is like super massive. Uh, the, the the protagonist has that kind of like really massive visor. That that marathon helmet made it to Halo Three, so you could have that cosmetic of of. Wait, of is that it? I think it's called the security helmet. I can, I'm 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 wrong about it. I might be wrong about it. But yeah, it looks like that, right? Um, oh, yeah, that's the helmet then. Yeah, that's but, the helmet. And I didn't know about Marathon when I was playing Halo Three, but that was my favorite helmet. Uh, well, you had to unlock it. You had to unlock it a very particular way. I can't remember. You had to get a certain amount of achievement points or something. I can't remember. I think so you're I grinding yeah. Halo Three for like all these like helmets, the the Hayabusa mm -hmm. armor, you know. Oh yeah, I remember getting that. I think I had every armor piece. Can't yeah, remember. exactly. Just one big pain in the ass. I remember I couldn't get. There was one armor piece I couldn't get because the level didn't work on this one di on the disc I had. This one level, oh, really? so I couldn't get the right the right amount of points on every level. Yeah, because there was that one I was missing, and then I borrowed someone else's disc so I could play that one level and beat it. Yeah, it was weird. It threw some 360 discs were kind of finicky at times. Like I had, I had similar problems with my Halo Three disc, where like I think the multiple there was like well, 
the multiplayer didn't work or it would freeze or something mm. like it was like something really weird like that so glad I don't have to use discs anymore yeah so SSD there's there's some speed. there's some open source uh, versions of that of a marathon that you can play uh, uh Aleph one yeah open source dang yeah, so you could play through the three games. How's the shooting in it, or the combat? It's it's it was it's the games came out like roughly at the same time that Doom did. Uh -huh. um, it's 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 a, it's a little it's a little tanky, mm -hmm. um, but the shooting is relatively similar to Doom, where it's like it's there is no vertical aim; it's just horizontal oh, yeah. aim, like look and shoot kind of deal. Is it sloping um, floors and stuff, or is it like Wolfenstein with like? It's 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 like wolf not really wolf it's more like doom it's more like doom where like like there's elevators and there's a clear sense of elevation and yeah. dimension uh it's it's obviously uh, a little tanky i think uh, uh, at least the first one is but um it's it's re it's really fun to explore these games i think yeah i never had i never had played them because oh. obviously as a Halo fan, you hear about Marathon, and you're like, I don't know, yeah, like Bungie's, like, right? But yeah. you, uh, you, you, there was never like a clear way to play them because there were Mac, there were F, there were Macs, there were games for the for the Mac computer, not for the PC. Oh. Oh, so that's yeah. why you know. That's why probably not a lot of people played it is because who had a Mac for PC? I mean, Wait, how is... I I didn't have a Mac. Period. Yeah, looks like they were aiming up here. Is that? Yeah, I think I think the, I think the, I think the versions. No, I think the uh, I was playing without horizontal aim, but I mean I think these guys. Uh, I think the Aleph One uh, open source does have um, all like just like all aim free aim. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it, it's, it generally looks like this. It's kind of mace like, but it's great because you can look up a. a um, a map and you can see what you've explored and it'll mark oh, it yeah. as what you've like, oh, it's seen. Got auto mapper and you, stuff. You don't get yeah, you don't get lost, which is like really great. Review twenty minutes. <laughs> Doom. Yeah, I think I think they're just kind of explaining like how crazy like ai in deep space parallel they are because of yeah how cold. Yeah. i think marathon came after but it was like like not very different not 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 the timing was like really close mm -hmm. so it would have been funny but i just i i don't get why it was a mac exclusive but i mean now you yeah. can play it on windows if you'd like good animation yeah, it, 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 each gun has like, or at, at least that gun has a primary fire of like a like a machine gun, and it has a grenade launcher. I think you could see him like shoot the machine gun, and then also you could see the explosion when he shoots the grenade launcher. <laughs> so that's, that's how the game tells its story: is through the AI and the computers, the terminals, and stuff like that. And so there's an there's a huge like really strong or there's like a really strong cult following for it where like people hmm. love the these games. Bungie's forgotten decade. Yeah. Now they do Destiny. Yeah, that's a that, that's another that's that's another game that I used to play a lot. I used to play the first Destiny a lot when on PS4. I used to do raids with a friend of mine. Because hmm. that was, was like the first kind of MMO on console. Yeah, it was like the FPS MMO kind of deal, like really like like light MMO mechanics. But I mean, yeah. that's that's kind of like perfect for me because MMOs are like complete science to me. Like after some point, I oh, picked yeah. up I picked up WoW Classic because I'm like, ah, you know what? I've never played like WoW when it was in its like vanilla state. You know what I mean? Like let's yeah. let's give it a try. And I, as soon as I got to level 40 and I got my mount, I said. I'm I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I can't I can't play games as a job. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 It's too much work after a certain point. Yeah. Friend I have got totally hooked on it, and now he does like scheduled rates where he has to show up because his client, <laughs> you know, like all this yeah. stuff. Yeah. You're kind of close.
people st am I still streaming? Okay. Huh? Oh. I can post the stream. Oh. Or like my stream at least. Yeah. I didn't even notice. All right. I should go eat. <laughs> I need to sleep soon. Oh yeah, same with me. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Thanks to everyone who's watching right now. I see you. I'm saying hi to you right now. You can't see me, but I'm waving at the screen. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Good luck with the memes. Good luck with making games. Hope you figure out a way to make tons of money off of it. Oh yeah, for sure. I'll and can do it full time. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. All right. See ya. Have a good day. Yeah. Or night, Bye, everyone. I guess. Bye. All right. Uh, man, I'm tired. I'm gonna go read someone and gotta go I gotta eat and then tomorrow back to working on the boss fight um, we're going to finish up the texture and do the animations and code hopefully get it working that's tomorrow's goal all right let's go find who to raid um, Uh, science and tech, we're trying to get to, oh wait, I should, yeah, here we are, and game dev. Um, who's to raid here? Wow, there's like no one online right now. Uh, let's raid Spirus. Alright, thanks everyone for joining. I'll see you all tomorrow, probably.